Howdy, howdy, ever what the fuck? Why am I why am I Christmas? Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna say it a seven and some boy. <laughs> oh, that's it's funny. Be late. Ah! All right, I that that thank thank you. See see for that. Now I can get to be like this for one minute. But how to hitty how how to hitty and everybody <laughs> right, rise here today we are going to be be playing Ace Attorney and yeah we have a new redeem re re name today today. As MCC just demonstrated it for us. <laughs> but I, I hope you all are having a good day. I feel like I'm going to get very... Okay, it stopped. Thank God. <laughs> uh, I have feeling in my brain again. I feel like I, that's going to get... I'm low-key worried I'm going to get, like, used to that redeem. Ah! It's not my name, CC, but thank you. <laughs> Welcome to stream. I hope you're having a good, well, uh, as good a day as you can have. I, right before I got on, I did see the events you posted. Don't beat yourself up too badly, buddy. Ugh. Trust me, a lot of people have gone through what you, you're going through. I won't go too much into detail, because, you know, it's a public stream and all that shit, but, and, uh, also it's just a stream in general. But, they go a bit easy on yourself, buddy. You don't deserve that. That's all I'll say. <laughs> mm. uh. But, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, all that aside, discombobulation and throwing shit at me aside. Uh, more Ace Attorney today. I'm very excited. I've been enjoying this game. Need Edgeworth. Maybe we'll get to Edgeworth. I will, I will be going to Edgeworth very momentarily because we don't got much else... I don't have much else going on. I cleaned my room today. And the carpet is, like, all nice and soft now because I vacuumed it. That shit was getting bad, man. I wasn't here for, like, two weeks. And it was just... Ugh, there was a lot of crumbs and everything on it because I just didn't have a chance to vacuum it. But I've done that. Uh, bed sheets are drying, so I have to look forward to nice, wood-smelling sheets tonight. But outside of that, my day's been just been pretty nice. It's just been pretty nice. I've had a good day. My day's been nice. I have a monster energy. Let's go to, let's go to Ace Attorney. Bada bing bada boom. Go ahead, turn that off. I was I was so close. I was so close to making it so that there was that the music ended like perfectly, but then the first part of Oblivious theme start. Hold on. It got it's I had to do something real quick. It's humid as fucking here. I am now shirtless. <laughs> like, uh, I've had, like, it's humid as fuck in here. I have my bed fan going, my bedtime fan going. I got my ceiling fan going. I've got the vent that, like, like that, like, vents out, like, the moist air from, like, bathrooms and shit the, with the bathroom I have uh, in my room. I have that going, and it's still, like, I'm still kind of fucking sweaty. And brother, there's so much background. There's so much background noise. Y'all are just not hearing right now. Like, uh, we got the fucking. I got fucking. Uh. Wait, what am I talking about? Like, I got fucking. Hmm. I think I accidentally. Hold on. I I fucked up something on my uh other screen. I just realized because I was like, you know, why didn't I see chat earlier? That was on uh. Chatting. Um, but yeah, I have had, like, there's so much background noise with all these fans going on. You you can probably barely hear it, like, when I'm talking, because I noise gave this shit, so y'all really shouldn't be able to hear it, like, that much. But, like, even on that video I posted on Twitter earlier today, like, you can, you can hear a little bit. You can hear a little bit of the vent in the bathroom, like, squeaking like a madman. And trust me, it's low-key driving me insane at this point. Somebody help. Mm. But anyways. Ugh. 
Yeah, moist. Yes, very moist. I am a, I am a moist. I am a moist dargon. Despite the fact that I light my arms on fire. You think that evaporates some things, but no. Mm, chased out like a pair of peasants. Just fixing my sound effects real quick. On the topic of my firearms, I just remembered. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Kay. There's something even thieves should never steal. Do you know what that is? Really shouldn't steal anything, however, I'll bite. What shouldn't a thief steal? A life. It's too heavy of a burden on your soul to get away with. Ever. That's something we can agree on. Well said, Kay. No matter. We may try. Murder is the one crime that can never truly be hidden. And I intend to prove that by my own hands. And I apprehend the murderer myself. All right, and I'm going to work extra hard to be a good assistant. Let's go. I still never said she could be my assistant. <laughs> I'm just going to drop the issue. First thing we should do is locate the real scene of the murder. Mr. Edgeworth! Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth, the stadium! Hurry, sir! This is supposed to be hush-hush, but they found a witness at the stadium. A witness? You, why did we tell you about leaving your assigned post? Ah, the jig is up. Mr. Edgeworth, remember that I'm always rooting for you, so go get him, sir. I love how he runs. <laughs> Those detectives sure look like they're enjoying themselves. It's not all fun and games, Kay. Now then, let's head to the stadium and meet this witness. Reliable Gumshoe, he is reliable. This is why he won best character on our Slash Ace Attorney's uh, character elimination poll thingy. <laughs> Hmm. He was the one left standing amidst all of them. Gumshoe is the most likable person. Wish I was that guy. Fuck, man, me too. Don't we all wish we were Gumshoe? Uh, Low-key, I feel like you only want to be Gumshoe so you can get Maggie. <laughs> uh. Arthur was a witness here. You know I'm right, you know I'm right, Cece. I see through you. <laughs> I know how you think. I see into your soul. I know what goes on in there. So do they, by the way. Both of them. They're judging you, all of us, all three of us, and Little Rai too. Just because he's not looking at the screen doesn't mean he doesn't see. Don't, th don't think you're safe. You're never safe. I'm not safe right now. Because you put these fucks on my shoulder. Shoulders, technically. <gasps> Yo! Emma! Oh, I'm so happy to see her! I love Emma. Emma's one of my favorites. It's before she becomes like a really fucking like... It's before she becomes a bitch. <laughs> Oh, this girl. Yeah, see, uh, Circuit, you just completed- you just got at, done with Trial with Rise from the Ashes, so... Yeah, this is, uh... This is Emma's next canonical appearance. <laughs> she appears in another game, I'm not gonna say when, I'm not gonna say where, and I'm not gonna say with who. But yeah, this is like... This is like your next instance of Emma showing up, so... Yay! <laughs> uh. What voice do I give her? Long time no see. I already like she's literally just K in a way. Fuck it, man. Let's just own up to the meme of me having like two female voices. Mm. If the, her and K get into a convo, it's gonna be funny. Long time no see. You are Miss Emma Sky, correct? This girl is the younger sister of my former superior, Lana Sky. Two years ago, we stood in the same courtroom together as a witness and prosecutor. I thought she had gone to Europe to study forensics. I can't believe you remember me, Mr. Edgeworth! Of course I do. How have you been? You look to be in good spirits. 
Are you still studying abroad? You bet! More than anything, I want to investigate crime scenes, scientifically. I've been studying non-stop every day to become a top-notch forensic scientist. But it's spring break now, so I thought I'd come back for a bit. I see. Also, Sucker, I'm not sure if I said it, but thank, uh, welcome to stream. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> I like to say welcome and thank you for coming to stream to everyone who shows up. Because it always means a lot. Even if I'm a smartass most of the time. My love is genuine. I almost didn't recognize you. You've really grown these past three years. Please don't tease me, Mr. Edgeworth. I know I still have a long way to go. But I'm going to be a super forensic scientist someday. You'll see. You seem to know Mr. Edgeworth really well. Are you two acquaintances? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Emma Sky. Nice to meet you. I'm studying abroad now to be a forensic scientist. How about you? Wow, you sound exactly like me. That's a great dream. My name's Kay Faraday. And I'm training to be an unstoppable great thief. Uh, great thief? Don't think too hard on it, Emma. It's not worth the trouble. In any case, we have much to catch up on. You bet we do. So, why are you here, Emma? Well, I just happened to decide to come back home for spring break. And then I heard that you'd come back too, so I raced on over here. I had really wanted to welcome you back at the airport, but I just missed you. And how exactly did you know I was here? Through the power of science, naturally. Never underestimate what science can do for you. And stalking! I used these to track your footprints and follow them straight to you. This set is the greatest. It's so wonderfully scientific. I was joking about the stalking, Emma. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you spray this chemical on the ground, <laughs> and when you shine the special light on it, <laughs> she actually is a stalker, huh? It's okay. She's cute, so she can get away with it. Hmm. <laughs> Zing! The footprints light up like an electrifying noble gas in a glass tube. It's almost like magic, scientifically speaking. Forensic science has never seemed more ominous to me than at this very moment. <laughs> uh, Emma, I'd like to ask you about what you witnessed. Huh? What are you talking about? Are you not the witness Detective Gumshoe told us about? Well, I did get a call from Detective Gumshoe earlier. He was practically yelling at me. Mr. Edgeworth, need your sign. How do I do? I need to do Emma doing an impression of my Gumshoe. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth needs his scientific doohickeys right now, pal. He said. <laughs> what was that man thinking? Or rather, not thinking. So let me guess. There's been a murder, right? Yes, unfortunately. The sun glint in her eyes. I need to keep my mind focused on the witness. Now, where did that person go? Uh, let's see. What can I present? Blue Badger Mobile. Other shit. I guess I'll just look around for a bit. I assume this is another Badger Mobile. Yeah, but it's a different color than the Blue Badger's car. Yes, this is the Retina Searing Pink model. Hmm, let's sound off in the distance. Oh, hey! It's the Pink Badger! Badger, get! Badger, 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 just what does she see in these silly things? I think this badger has something to say to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Fucking ironic that Emma's involved in the same case that these badgers are about. I know. <laughs> that was probably intentional. They were like, you know, we're using the badgers a lot. You know where else we had the badgers? <laughs> and Meekins is in here too, Circuit. Because you weren't here last week. You missed out on Meekins being a badger as well. This entire thing is just, hey, you know Rise from the Ashes? Let's, uh, let's reference that a lot. A lot, a lot. <laughs> uh. Oh. Are you by chance the witness I've been searching for? 
sorry, but I don't speak Badger Dance. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I can't take being inside that stuffy head anymore! You're... No... Why her? Why here? Why now? I first met this woman three years ago. She went a witness in one of my cases. She has since gone out of her way to pop up unexpectedly and cause me great grief. Edgy poo! Why couldn't you understand what I was trying to tell you? I mean, really. I was trying so hard to keep the king's dreams alive by staying in character. But you couldn't pick up on what I was trying to convey to you. I'm sick and tired of that roundabout way of talking. So I'm just going to be direct. Had a bad feeling before, but this just made it official. Today has gone beyond the typical not my day to in the realm of waking nightmare. So you're a friend of Mr. Edgeworth too, Miss Pink Badger. Oh, you could say that. But right now I'm just a Pink Badger, dearie. She may look the part, but I know better than to trust my eyes around this woman. My name is Wendy Oldbag. You can call me Wendy, or Granny, or whatever suits your fancy. Nice to meet you, Miss Old Bag. I'm Kay Faraday. Hmm, what do I care about a young whippersnapper like you? Yeesh, I was just trying to be polite. Oh, weren't you a security guard at one of the last Gatewater hotels the last time we met? Hmm, I go where I'm needed. I'm very good at what I do, unlike the youth of today. I get called in all the time to fill in where there aren't enough hands. But enough about me, Edgy Poo. I'm thoroughly dejected right now. I finally get the chance to see you again, and here I are, talking with two young girls. Men are all the same. It doesn't get with young girls. Why, the other day, I just happened to notice me. When it got into a range of with a 16 year old, he gets into these all the time. The permission three years. You seem to attract all sorts of interesting people, Mr. Edward. Hey, please, I'm begging you. By all means, do not provoke her any further. <laughs> Uh, I'm really happy to see- I'm really happy to see everything going on right now. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something, Mr. Edgeworth? This person could be the witness. Honestly, I hope she isn't, but I don't think fate is going to be so kind today. I saw what happened. I even saw the exact moment it happened. How's that? So it's true. She is the witness. <laughs> You don't suppose I can afford to ignore the old bag? Yes, it was just a little while ago. I saw it happen right in front of me. The moment of the murder. You mean to say that you witnessed someone being killed right before your eyes? The fucked up thing is that old bag is the most reliable witness in the case in that case she was in. <laughs> you know what? Let's see if that holds up still. <laughs> Okay. Sounds like a pretty important piece of testimony to me. The fucking side eye. And somehow I don't feel like it's malicious. I came to this stadium to take a short break. And as I was resting, I happened to glance over and saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly there was a loud gunshot and the person who was shot fell to the ground. It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. Looks like we hit the jackpot, huh, Mr. Edworth? Yes, I can't afford to ignore, ignore what she has to say. Fortunately... What's that unfortunately attacked on in the end supposed to mean, Edgy Poo? Well, anyway, let's see what we can find out from this little lady. Alrighty. Let's see here. Short break. Not really important. As I was resting, I had to glance over and saw two men facing each other in that area. 
Let's see. Waterland pamphlet. We've got your Bible. Let's learn more about the men. Hold it. Saw two men. Can you describe them for me? They looked like your average Joes. Completely uninteresting and not worth fawning over. I'm telling you, they were so boring, I don't even remember much beyond that. But did they have any special features? Anything you can recall would be very helpful. Oh my, don't tell me you're jealous of these two men. Hey, she's right, you do seem pretty worked up over them, Mr. Edward. I am not worked up over anyone, and I'm not jealous. <laughs> it's alright, Edgy Poo. Those two were just foals compared to a stallion like you. I thought so little of them that I lost interest the instant I laid eyes on them. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot. Alright, um, press on this. You're claiming to have seen the exact moment in which the murder took place. Absolutely! That gun made a terrible racket when it was fired. You didn't try to go help the person that got shot? I'm only one person, you smart alecky brat. What could I have done? But I took off as soon as I could to find someone who could help. Two men, one bullet. It's all consistent with what we found from the body. Sadly, there wasn't exactly a lot of new information to go on in your testimony. Well, if I saw the guy again, I'm sure I could identify him for you. I mean, how do you expect me to remember anything without something to jog my memory? Self-centered, aren't we? Well, it was somewhat useful. Her testimony also presents us with a new problem. Mr. Edgeworth! Yes? So, about this new problem... What is that giant grin on your face for? Do you want me to show you something really nice? No, thank you. Don't be so mean! I swear it's something you're going to like! S what is that gadget you're holding? What you see before you is the secret weapon of a great thief! Ah, uh, I should have known it would be worthless. Ah, uh, don't be like that! <laughs> what the fuck? What do you think now? What is it doing? Is it projecting something into the air? I'm going to input the necessary information to run the simulation now. Once I'm done, I'll increase the size of the projection to its maximum size. Dark skies of the evening, when no other bird dares take wing. One alone remains all-seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern-day Robin Hood! Oh, fuck my eyes! What is this? This is a recreation of the murder based on the info I inputted into the little thief. <laughs> what the? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, Ace Attorney does take place in the future, but like... God damn, that's a lot. <laughs> the little the <laughs> so we got magic <laughs> and sci-fi <laughs> in the same universe. Welcome to Ace Attorney. <laughs> Welcome to Japanifornia. Nothing makes sense, and the and the fucking hamburgers look like sushi. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Little Thief, I dare to think you're taking the Robin Hood thing a bit too far. Little Thief is actually meant to be a simulator for me to plan my thefts. But, I suppose if I used it like this... Let's see, Miss Old Nag said that the two men were facing each other, and then a gunshot rang out and the victim fell to the ground. Ah, oh, so at this we can expect the crime scene as it was in the past. See? So what do you think? I have to say, I'm impressed with the technology thieves have access to these days. Well, it is the super secret weapon of the mighty Yada Garasu. Indeed. Oh, but if there isn't enough information, or something is out of place, recreation could come out a little strange. In other words, I can use this to authenticate the validity of a witness's testimony. You got it! You really catch on quick, Mr. Edgeworth! Right now, this simulation is a recreation of that witness's testimony. So for now, I should re-examine everything. If I find anything illogical or strange, I can ask, then ask for clarification. Feel free to examine anything in the simulation the way you always do. 
You can even present evidence when you find a contradiction. And if you find something, I've got Little Thief with me, so you just let me know, okay? All right. Let's begin investigating the simulated crime scene. I like that I can still walk through it. That's cool. Uh, okay, so we did say talk to Wen- We didn't want to talk to her and present her information on the man, right? What is this? Some sort of new attraction? All right. Present. Here's a dead body. Go on, Edgy Pooh. Show me anything and I'll tell you all about it. Very well, what do you think about this? It's nothing special. Oh, I figured she'd say as much. Well, that confirms that, at least. Alright, let's see. According to the testimony, the victim fell to the ground here. That's right, but... but... If that's the case, then we've already found our first contradiction. Huh? What? Where? This is the real scene of the crime. There's something missing that should be here. Which piece of evidence shows the missing item? It's blood, right? It has to be blood. Take that. Blood and bullet, most likely. This is the contradiction. Eh, is something wrong with my recreation? This is the real scene of the crime. Something specific should be here. Think back, how did we deduce that the other crime scene was not the real one? Oh, I get what's missing now. There's no blood on the ground here either, right? Right. The fact that there is no blood here casts doubt on the witness's testimony. Edgy Poo! How can you doubt me like that? Are you calling me a liar? I know what I saw, and I saw the victim get shot down! You know, I don't think she's lying, Mr. Edgeworth. To be honest, I can't think of any reason why she would lie to me. In that case, maybe there is another explanation for the distinct lack of blood. Silhouette of the killer with his gun at the ready. Hey, is it not possible to recreate the face of the killer? Well, I can't exactly input what we don't know into Little Thief. He has a point. Hmm. He not dead there? Potentially. Hey, look at the logic. What do we have so far? Victim was a kid was kidnapper. My kidnapper's print leads us to a body was the victim in a costume. And why is there no blood? This is amazing! Just feel the power of science! Badger mobile. Hmm. I'm a death, pending autopsy. Loss of blood, lower right andaman, exit point, shoulder. Wait, hold up. The lower abdomen exiting the shoulder. Fellas, I think we're... I think we got the shooters wrong. Because if it's lower right, because it was the abdomen and the shoulder, he's at the perfect angle for that to occur. Can I examine it again? Do I, is that really, do I really connect these? Oh, you know, the victim being in a costume would prevent there being blood. That's all I can do right now. Not possible that the victim was wearing a costume. 
So you really think that Mr. Deacon was one of the kidnappers? I think we can reasonably assume there was a very good chance that he was. And that if he was shot while he was inside one of those stolen costumes, then Mr. Deacon's blood would be inside the costume instead of on the ground. Precisely. Now, if only we could prove that the victim was wearing a costume. You'd think it'd be pretty easy if we could find some footprints. The problem is finding them since there doesn't seem to be any around. Footprints, huh? wonder how we can go about finding some of those. Emma, give me your foot, give me your foot fetish tracker stalker thing. Hmm. Emma, about that method you were talking about for finding footprints. Finally, my expert knowledge in forensics is needed. Yes, well, can you detect and trace even partial footprints? Leave it to me. My cutting edge detection kit can find anything. Very well. If you could please analyze the footprints in this area. Okay, stand back now and witness the power of science at work. Aw, no more holograms. Hey, I found something. Look right there. I don't see anything. Oh, that's right. Here, put these special glasses on, Mr. Edgeworth. These footprints were definitely left by a badger costume. Judging by the way the prints are layered, they seem to be the newest. We can conclude that the victim was definitely wearing a costume at the time. Prince costume data... dotted in organizer. Okay, in that case, I'll update Little Thief's simulation parameters. I can't wait to see what we find out from this new info. I'm sorry, but the blue badger just being shot is kind of funny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that, did, that just made me chuckle a lot. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> This is fucking cartoonish looking figure just being shot dead. <laughs> uh. And with that, we should be one step closer to truth, right? Hmm, I see the recreation has changed in accordance with the new information. Maybe closer, but now something else has caught my attention. What do you want? Your testimony, naturally. I'd like to hear it one more time, if you please. I came to this stadium to take a short break. As I was resting, I happened to glance over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot, and the person who was shot fell to the ground. It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. So, does this mean that Miss Oldbag's testimony has a contradiction in it? So, I believe our best course of action is to compare it with your recreation. See, I just knew Lil Thief would be of hell. Now, let's see if we can pull up more info from Miss Oldbag to put into the recreation. That, we must first find the contradiction in her testimony. I was wondering why she was leaving out the costume. In the stadium, as I was resting, I'm the glancer when I saw two men. Loud gunshot. I'm holding on to that fucking the shooter was on the ground thing until I in in the back of my head. I really feel we got it wrong. Hold it. Saw two men. Can you describe them for me? They looked like your average Joes, completely uninteresting and not worth fawning over. I am telling you, they were so boring, I don't even remember much beyond that. Did they have any special features? Anything you can recall would be very helpful. Oh my, don't tell me you're jealous of those two men. 
So we're already talking. Okay, I guess, I guess we're just going over it again. So two men facing each other. I guess I have to present the costume data. Okay. Two men? How did you know the gender of the two people involved? Oh, that's what it is. Seeing as how the cost victim was wearing a costume at the time. Furthermore, I have another matter I'd like to inquire about. I'd very much like to know why you failed to mention the costume in your testimony. Ah! I'm beginning to doubt if you really witnessed the murder at all. But I'm telling you, I really did see it! I saw it with my very own eyes! Dot 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 dot. I'm a seat in the second tier. Second tier? Hey, didn't you say it saw it right in front of you earlier? That was, you know, I was using the phrase in the metaphorical sense. I see our Western witness still has a crew loose in the metaphorical sense. The cushy seats and the other tea are reserved for hot shot VIPs. Which is exactly why I go there now and again to take a nap. I can't see how you could have gotten a good look from there. It's so high up. Were you about to see even the victim's costume from way up there? Well, I know I saw two people, but I couldn't really see what they looked like because they were in the stage's shadow. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, you know? Not like when I was young and I go to a bottom man from 100 trees because they know it was me in a flash to try to make the move. I was a careful go with a judgmental. Let's return to our investigation, shall we, Kay? You got it. I like that she's breathing heavily and mad right now. <laughs> I like that attention to detail. Round two. You know, I really like Kay's portrait down here. It looks really, like, it just looks really good. It looks adorable. I could pinch her cheeks. All right. You silhouette to the victim is in a costume. Silhouettes can change depending on the information I input, but Little Thief can recreate more than just people. So investigate away, we may find even more info which we should make a more accurate sim. Right, sounds like a plan. Sam in here? Looks like they broke the stage down. I guess this means they're done for the day. Maybe it's because a different show is scheduled to start its run tomorrow. I think I got that info. Kill it with the gun. I mean, we're supposed to recreate the... You have to say they were in the shadow, right? So, where do I go to do this? What about up here? No. Wait, or... Oh, wait, no. Okay. Impact away. It was hard to make out the killer and the victim. That's all I can do right now. That woman's testimony is to be believed. The murder occurred before the stage was broken. You want me to input that little bit of info, info in the little thief? Yes, if you please. Okay. Alright, let's see what we got. <laughs> this is a funny image. <laughs> Uh, that's a really funny image. There is clearly a contradiction here. Please stop stealing my lines. Oh, come on. It wasn't that hard to see it coming, even for a layman like me. I suppose, in any case, it's not possible for the killer to have stood here in that way. This was a very real stage set up in this spot at that time. 
Yeesh, I told you I got it. Do you have, do you feel the need to explain everything? Yes, well, in any case, we still need to resolve this unusual situation. Isn't it obvious? The killer was on top of the stage, naturally. Right, Miss Oldbag? Yes, I remember now. The killer was standing on top of the stage. See, now let me update the info in the simulation. Abdomen to shoulder. Abdomen to shoulder. Abdomen to shoulder. Abdomen to shoulder. Let me say it. I hate it. I hate it here. Abdomen to shoulder. Abdomen to shoulder. The entry was the abdomen. It exited the shoulder. This is not how angles work. And now this bitch is here. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Well, well. What do we have here? A bunch of hooligans running amok, I see. Agent Lang, how nice of you to join us. Well, I can't have you going around messing up my crime scenes. Agent Lang, we've discovered that the real scene of the murder is here, the stadium. I see. Thanks. For what? I'm just trying to show you my appreciation for all the time you saved me. Who knew that such a strange little toy could recreate a crime scene like that? Oh, Thief is not a toy! You too! Sir! Mm. Uh, dang, they fucking assembled that shit real quick. How long did that take? <laughs> there you have it. You see, big boys like me don't need silly toys, little girl. Now this is a recreation. So what? You still intend to assert that Officer Meekins is the killer? Of course, even knowing that the crime took place here doesn't let him off the hook. This is the real scene of the crime. Officer Meekins lay in wait for the victim on top of the stage. And when the victim finally showed, he shot him from on high. That's the truth your little recreation show. I finally get to say it! I finally get to say it! Let me say it! Let me say it! I've been wanting to say it for the past 20 minutes! <laughs> uh, how far will you go to accuse Officer Meekins of the crime? He's the most likely suspect we've got, especially given the situation with his gun. Well, even if he is the killer, at least my recreation was on the mark. See? Thank you for understanding, my little crow girl. I'm not some common crow. I'm the Yadagarasu, the Raven of Legend. Fortunately, your conclusion has yet to be tested, so let's see how well it holds up. I like that they put the stage there. God, I fucking love the attention to detail here. They've done a really good job. Uh... Alright, and when the victim finally showed, he shot him from on high. Hold up. I'm just checking some things. Um... Do, do, do. Don't mind me at all. Don't mind me at all. I made it tab, okay. Don't mind me. I'm just I'm just looking at the manual for my modded for my modded Nintendo DS. <sighs> Thank you for the pet CC. It's appreciated. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not from chapter start. <laughs> I was about to do something really stupid. All right. Let me say it! Objection. Finally! Fuck! I'm terribly sorry, Agent Lang. Question mark? I should have warned you that our recreation is incomplete. You cut in quite unexpectedly after all. What's that supposed to mean? You said that the victim was shot by the killer from up above, correct? I hate to break it to you, but that's not possible. Huh? Why not? 
call Mr. Deacon's body, specifically where the gunshot wounds were located. Actually, I didn't get that good of a look. Oh, well then. A bullet entered Mr. Deacon in his abdominal region and exited his right shoulder. This is more consistent than an ang with an angled shot from beneath the victim. Yeah. <clears throat> then, yes, our recreation had the victim being shot at an angle from above. A clear contradiction. You're discounting your own conclusions. No, this one point is the only flaw. This was a mistaken parameter in our recreation. Killer and victim's location. Yes, the location of the killer and the victim were wrong. Ah, I get it. I see what you're trying to say. I believe the killer and the victim were standing opposite to what we initially thought. It was the victim who was on top of the stage as he was being shot by the killer. This is what happened, it would also explain the positioning of the gunshot. Then what about the footprints? These footprints don't lie, we can assume then that the killer also wore a costume. Okay, I'll try using that data instead. <laughs> another one, and another one, and another one. <laughs> <laughs> it gets funnier every time the blue badger silhouette is added. That means the bullet is on the stage, right? It would be, but that would also mean that the um, that the bullet might have gotten lost when the stage was being packed up. But also that no, because the blood is in the costume. Then, hmm. judging by the fact that the victim and the killer were both wearing costumes, I'd say it was a killing between the two kidnappers. That would be the most natural conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, Agent Lang? Hmm. Well done, Mr. Prosecutor. But that alone doesn't clear Officer Meekins of the crime. I ask that you take another good look at the tire marks over there. The three marks are indicative of the Blue Badger Mobile. That story Officer Meekin sold about the shop on wheels getting stolen was just a lie. He drove the Blue Badger mo mobile here and committed the murder. Then he used the car to move the body to the garage in the Wild Wild West area. Hmm. I was thinking he was going to focus on the fact that Meekins is also wearing a costume right now. Not that, um... Not the Blue Badger mobile. I believe he moved the body with the car. That's right, it was the officer Meekins himself who pointed us to the way he did it. Three tire tread marks are very telling, however, is the blue badge will be the only thing creating such a pattern. Take another good look at the tire marks over there. To the blue badger mobile. Let's just press on this. Wild Wild West. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's been quite a few, uh, there's been quite a few areas we've gone to. <laughs> three tire marks. I have to agree that the Blue Badger Mobile has three tires. Of course, the only thing this park that could move in this park that could make those marks is the rowing shawl. Are you forgetting that there are in fact three of them? You can't simply ignore the pink and the proto badger mobile station line. Of course, I didn't say it couldn't be either of the other two, but I see no reason to drag them into this just to complicate things. That is... so dumb. Hold it. Of course you have some... Of course you have some sort of proof it was all a lie, correct? Of course not! <laughs> oh, that was blunt. <laughs> Uh, 
But suppose it is a lie. It would explain a lot of things. Great detective work, Lang. Lang L. <laughs> Bro, I kind of love Lang for how just fucking unabashedly and confidently stupid he is. <laughs> like his movements and his whereabouts. Oh my god, okay. Let me look at the blue badger mobile. Mobile shop on three wheels was parked inside the Wild West gar Wait a minute. But where the tire tracks were doesn't line up with where the, um... Doesn't line up with where the car is actually parked. Hold on, I'm gonna... I'm gonna save on this real quick. And then I'm gonna reload it and we're gonna see if we're right. From save point. We do a little bit of save scumming as a treat. Alright, I'm not sure what they want me to present. I'm presenting this. Objection! That was not what they wanted me to present. <laughs> That was not what they wanted me to present. <laughs> Let's try again. Alright. I guess... Wait, can I check it? Yeah, I can check it. The fuck? There we go. Okay, figured it out. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I love that Viz Dead emote. I need to ask Viz about a collab again sometime soon. I need to try and get a bunch of the guys together. Sorry, Agent Lang, but that's an impossible tale. And why is that? Those tire marks could not have been left by the Meek Officer Meekin's Blue Badger Mobile. Okay, so simply for the fact. That I would love to have this as the audio on the waiting screen. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead, go to ad break, and then as soon as we get back, we're gonna have um we're gonna have uh Edgeworth roast the shit out of Lang. So, this is gonna be a great opportunity for y'all to go ahead, take a break, go get some snacks, go get some water, some drinks, use the bathroom, do whatever y'all humans need to do. And once we're back. Uh, we'll go ahead and win this wire to talk about. So with all that being said, uh, bye for right. now.
Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome back. Hope y'all had a good break. Hope everybody got done what they need to get done. Let's go ahead and continue to Edgeworth's um, Roasting of Lang. Giving him like, two L's. Technically three, because he's got one at the start of his name. Ah. One look at the car would have told you so. What proves that the Blue Magimobile had never been to the stadium? Do they want me to point at the car or the ground? I'm guessing the car. Reason I believe this car never came to the stadium is the car itself. Huh? What do you mean? Pink Magimobile was here from the beginning, and there is no need for two Magimobiles to be at one location at the same time. You sure like to give random answers to things, don't you? But I'm not so easily sidetracked by such weak logic. What do you mean? The car has no fucking tire tracks in front of it. <laughs> My brother in Christ. Over here. Never been to the stadium. Take that. Oh my god. What proves that the Blue Badger Mobile had never been to the stadium? So we're proving it hasn't been to the stadium. The pink badger mobile. Take that. Find it all. What's wrong with you, Mr. <laughs> Prosecutor? <laughs> oh my god. He's saying it was driven back. Higher. Sure. The fucking tires. Are you wrong? No. He is not incorrect. But I'm just processing this. Give me a moment. No, 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 not the obvious fucking tire tracks. I mean, I guess you could say... I guess you could say that those were more when he left. But even then, it was raining, like, a good bit before Edgeworth got out, like Kay said. I don't know, man, I don't like that. This car had come to the backstage area and left those tire tracks, and the lack of mud on these tires stands out as very peculiar indeed. And how do you explain the tire tracks, genius? Hey, I've got it. What about Miss Oldbag's pink badger mobile? Don't be ridiculous. I was sleeping the entire time in the second tier seat. Indeed, I believe we can rule her out as someone related to the crime. However, there is yet one more roving store, as I recall. Oh, you mean the proto badger? Right, there was one more parking space inside that garage, and it proves the existence of the Proto -Badger Badger Mobile. Agent Lang, I suggest you find this Proto Badger Mobile post haste. Must still be some sort of incriminating evidence in it. Eh. Proto Man did it? 
<laughs> fucking proto man is telling us to go burn down the wild west area with fire <laughs> old game grumps reference h l l b dead are you all right well, this is something. Looks like we found our kidnapping victim. Where were you all this time? Wild West with kidnappers. There was no room next to the one I was holding. Ran away using underground and got lost. Kidnappers. What is it? I can't understand what you're trying to say. The kidnappers escape wearing costumes. Did you see the faces of your kidnappers? No, I didn't see their faces, but two, one was a woman. A woman? Quite an important piece of testimony. Hey, what are you guys doing? Stop standing there and get the cops on this already. I'll even let you guys have that. what the kid said just now. Consider it a gift. Now, what are you go- Now, are you going to get out crying crime scene, or am I going to have to get rough? Then? You're nothing but a big bully. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. Not you. You're a very important witness for my case. I'm not allowed about to let you get away that easy. Don't count on me to testify, because I won't. Not for you. That's right won't either. You hear me, you young whippersnapper? Hey, calm down. There's no need for all this hostility. I just want to take a statement from each of you. I'm not going to rough either of you up. I give you my word. Come now, fair maidens. What say you? Will you cooperate? <laughs> Tips fedora. Fair maidens? My knight, you little rascal. You sure know the way into a woman's heart. Lang Z says, the passage of time is but a fleeting moment, and a lady is young forever. Hm. Try now to do my edgy poo with your fish fancy sayings. Let's get this over with. So we're clear, I'm only interested in giving you my statement. I've got, bro, in the minutes between la the stream earlier and bet between the break and now, I've completely forgotten the voice I was specifically giving old Nag. Hmm. Sure, just as soon as Mr. Prosecutor leaves us be. Mr. Edgeworth! To be continued. He raised her. <laughs> Blood man, he can, have, he can have old bag. I won't complain. I, I, I value her, um, free will. Okay. Looks like we got the boot again. Lance safe, the focus of the investigation will shift solely on to the murder. So Lang was the kidnapper, right? By God, that'd be fucking nice. <laughs> you mean the infighting between the kidnappers? Yes, and also the identity of the remaining kidnapper. Miles, my boy! I'm so glad to fucking voice him again. Tell me it's true. Tell me you really found my boy. Yes, Mr. Amano, we found him early in the stadium. And my little Lance is unhurt. Not exactly the picture of perfect health, but his life is not in any danger. Being questioned right now by Agent Lang. <laughs> Poor Lance. It must have been so horrible for him. Locked up like a... Sob. I want to talk to Omano just because I like voicing. Uh. Miles, my boy, I can't thank you enough. It was nothing. I'm still in shock over what happened to oh, I... What happened to Oliver? 
<laughs> I have to say, I'm relieved that land lands so bright. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I fucking love developing this rare team. <laughs> I must forget the past is on the lands as soon as the police are finished with him. The fact that I can hear it makes it seem even fun in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my good god. <laughs> Adventure. <laughs> oh, the weed lands is being chased after by women. Remind me of someone I know. <laughs> okay, it's over. It's done. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh. That, that one caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, I almost can't believe they received yet another love letter, you know? Here, yeah, take a look for yourself! Isn't this a breach of confidentiality? Oh, okay. A very simple love letter. Tender Letter Loan Company. <laughs> oh, hey, let me see. Hmm, that's really weird. It's from a loan company, Tender Lender. Looks more like a collection bill to me. Uh, Viola? I forgot who Viola is. Oh my god. Let's analyze that a little bit. Uh. Uh. Yeah, Tender Lender Loan Company. That's about all you can make out. Oh, Viola. It, that's what it said. The text box was blocking it. Oh, lordy. Okay. Talk to you. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Ah, It's the twelfth one. No, you can't give up, Lord. Just one more try. Excuse me, but I can't help but feel a bit sorry for all the flowers you've gone through. I suppose, if they were me, then... Blush. I believe you said that you were Lance's girlfriend when we first met, correct? Yes, I am, but... Oh, it's not like we both think of each other as lovers. But he did give me this ring, so I guess we're not just friends, either. I mean, because this isn't just any ordinary ring. It tastes so sweet when you lick it. Oh. It's so wonderful. You mean to tell me that he gave you a lollipop ring? Bro, that's what I'd propose with. I'm just saying. L -l ladies, if you if you ever if you ever want to riz up the rise, that that this is that's your future. Cause I can't date a woman who can't who can't look at that and laugh and say yes. Just saying. <laughs> uh but for real, I need my I need a my girlfriend to like have a sense of humor. But to be honest, if you're attracted to me, you probably have one. I forgot what it was called. If you're thinking, oh man, a ring pop to propose, that reminds me of a movie. It's Neubert. It's Neubert. That's the movie. Neubert proposes to his uh, love interest with a ring pop when they're kids. You didn't- Brother! You didn't remember what a ring pop was called! Fucking- A RING POP! It's in the name! My brother in Christ! A RING POP! I'm challenged? Are you? ARE YOU CHALLENGED?! I FEEL LIKE YOU JUST NEVER HAD A FUCKING RING BOX! <laughs> NOW I'M DEAD, VID. 
Now I'm dead viz. You are dead viz right now. And you deserve it. Jesus Christ. Did you never look at a candy aisle in your life? Anyways. Oh my god. <sighs> Decided. Shouldn't the parties involved naturally just know? My father used to work for Mr. Amano. And so Lance and I grew up together. <gasps> I said it out loud. I don't see how that's anything to be embarrassed about. So your father was an employee of the Amano group. What did he do? I heard his job was to fly around the world on Pegasus. A Pegasus? Well, Pegasus was the name of the airplane. The airplane belonged to the company. You had me there for a second. But now, it's all changed. My father, he isn't around anymore. Oh, I see. About ten years ago, he rode in Pegasus off to somewhere and never returned. I heard he was going to a couple of towers. I wonder what happened there. <laughs> ah. Riding Pegasus to whereabouts unknown sounds like the stuff of legends are made of. It's been so long. I don't know if I'd recognize him if we were ever to meet again. I'm so sorry, Lauren. But I won't give in to the sadness. I have to live. Yes, Lauren. Live. About this incident. Incident? But isn't the kidnapping already over and dealt with? I've been here the whole time, so I'm afraid I don't know much about any other incident. How did you come to know that Lance had been kidnapped? Oh, um, that's because of my women's intuition. You based everything on that. I know everything when it comes to my lance. It's really strange. It must be destiny. Blush. She started fantasizing again. Gee, I wonder who kidnapped Lance. It could be anybody. <sighs> so what are you going to do now, Mr. Edward? You already established there's a good chance that the killer is the other kidnapper. It's my duty to figure out this, uh, who this other person is. I believe there is one location that might hold a clue or two. The, crime, the isolation room. Yeah. Place where we were held as prisoners. Hold it! Don't let me in with you! I can't allow you to slander my good name as Great Thief by saying I was captured. Not being able to escape from someone qualifies you as a caged bird, Kay. Besides, we checked that place out pretty well while we were there, remember? Don't you think it'd be even a better idea to check somewhere else? Perhaps you are right. What I really need right now are leads to the killer's identity. I believe there is one location that might hold a clue or two. Kidnapper's hideout? Obvious location is the kidnapper's hideout. But we're still not allowed in, remember? Agent Lang and his men should be done with this area. In that case, there is no harm in asking that officer over there to let us in. Oh, here we go. What do you have to report? Sir, nothing unusual out of the ordinary, sir. Where have I heard such redundancy before? Hmm, is it possible for you to let us take a look around inside? Sir, Roger, sir. Was surprisingly hassle-free. Are you certain an Agent Lang order you to not allow me in? Sir. Sir. That's true, sir, but... Detective Gumshoe asked me to personally let you in, sir. And I couldn't refuse a request from him. Wow, looks like Detective Gumshoe has a following. Furthermore, I was asked to give this document to you, sir. What is this? Oh. Huh. See here, Colin Devore, sex male, height, 5'8, weight, blah, dominant hand, right. That's, that seems interesting. Her out's unknown after his escape from Penn E. Dent Prison stole a gun from a guard during his escape. We thought he might head to where his wife, his name here says Colin Devore. It's the same name as the one on the back of this pen. Here's that Colin Devore was his real name. What's this? 
He was convicted in a case 10 years ago and sent to prison. What? Then what was he doing here? He specified the hand, therefore it's going to be relevant. <laughs> they specified his sex, therefore it's going to be relevant. Quick, drop the corpse's pants. <laughs> uh, apparently, he broke out of jail and just vanished. He must have become Oliver Deacon to cover up the fact that he was an escaped felon. see here. Oh, I'm not sure what's going on anymore. See here. Uh, we thought he might head to where his wife and sole daughter are, but despite our surveillance, he has yet to show up. So some sort of link between the victim's past and this current case. These police documents are rather detailed. Take the time to give them a thorough read eventually. It's fine. Let us focus one thing at a time, starting with the kidnapper's hide. Yeah, I agree. We should investigate first. Think later. More than thinking things through, I think you should try remembering things first. Now then, if you could please unlock the door, officer. It was locked until a little while ago, but since then the door's been wide open, sir. I'm not sure I follow it is what it is you're saying. I'm not sure I follow what it is you're saying, but care to explain in a bit more detail. Sir, the door was locked down tight when they went to check out the room. So they got about ten officers to help out and break down the door, sir. You see. So that means I get Agent Lang's leftovers. Well, let's just see what we find. Let's see here. This is where the kidnappers plan their foul deed. Why, you were tied up for a while in the room next door. <laughs> hey, please, must you bring that up again? Now then, down to business. There might still be some clues left in this room. To try to find out what we can of the other kidnapper's identity. I totally have no idea who it could be. On this door, it's where the kidnappers held you after getting the jump on you. Must you keep reminding me? Well, it's the room where I got to see your awesome yo face. You need to remind me of that mortifying moment either. All right, table, chairs. Don't rest until I've investigated every single nook and cranny. There's a key. Key. Hmm? I wonder what this key is to. Hmm. You got me. Reminds me of the key we found in the other room. That's it! It must be the key from one of those trap doors. It wasn't a trap door, you only call it one because you quite literally jumped into it. Hey, but isn't that what you're supposed to do when you see one? I am not having this conversation with you. Anybody want a fresh cup of coffee? Anybody want coffee? Anybody want a fresh cup of coffee? See, the coffee pot looks like it was poured all the way. Is that what it said? Three cups. Yeah. Coffee looks like it was poured today. Oh, that's what it said. Sam and the map. Host of Gatewaterland is stuck on this wall. Intrigue, fun, prestige. Gatewaterland has it all in its waiting for you. Two kidnappers, three cups. I should ban you for that one. But I won't because I was trying to think of how to spin it that way, too. <laughs> I was just like, ah, oh, but there were like three cups and not one, and yeah. I should I should have just gone with it. If I can't go all the way, I just don't. Well, it's especially catchy, is it? The shared brain cell. <laughs> yeah, if I if I kill you, I kill the entire brain cell. And I just die. Ugh. Rolling chairs, and by the looks of it, they were probably used by the kidnappers. Hmm, there are three chairs set around the table. Gee, three cha cups, three chairs. Let's see here. Watch out, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a broken mirror. Probably came from the haunted house. Why is it here? Are they planning to repair it? 
sign advertising the photo rally, something I have absolutely no interest in. Yeah, but I do, and I'm going to get my hands on the rest of the Badger family, you'll see. Definitely brings a decidedly different atmosphere to a criminal investigation. Unused folding chairs seen against the wall in their folded state. Wow, whoever lined these up did it perfectly. They're not even a single hair off. I feel bad using these just because I'd be like stealing the perfection away. I suppose it's more like it would want to be the one to put them away. Ugh. Hey, there's a trap door in this room too. Not a trap door, it's an entrance to an underground passage, Kay. I know that. The door leading to the outside world was locked. The lands must have escaped this prison through here. Oh, they have barrels like these just outside. Yes, and? Well, I aren't no I already asked you, but what Discombobulate Redeem ain't even going, I'm already slurring my speech. Well, I know I already asked you when we were out here, but if these are real, then what would you put in them? There's an expectant gleam in her eyes that I'm about to dash. Yeah, this must be why they dispose of old and worn out costumes. That's so sad. It would seem they throw the costumes away in pieces. I hide out this trash bait for unused costumes. Trash bait, I'm a trash man. What have we here? Looks like a sword. A broken sword. Strange. How would it be broken like that? The mirror? Swords don't usually break on their own. That's true. Alright then, let's think about it this way. Maybe it broke when someone was trying to use it for or on something. Hmm. Hypotheticals aren't going to get us anywhere. Perhaps we should think more on this later. Actually, wouldn't it be the sword used to bonk Edgeworth earlier? That makes sense. Alrighty. We say two kidnappers, three cups. But perhaps three kidnappers, three cups. Common denominator between the cups and folding chairs is the number of three. Speaking of which, number of missing costumes is also three. Wait, but I thought there were only two kidnappers. Indeed, something isn't adding up. Literally. It's possible there is a third kidnapper that Lance didn't see? I really didn't add anything, though. Broken sword prop, costume pieces... Thing is, the costume piece lines up with our bad badger head we have. Hmm. Trap door doesn't lead anywhere. Going to war a love letter. Wait, can I, uh... I checked this earlier, but it never hurts to take another look. Yeah, I can't deduce anywhere. The rally, we check that. Examine this again. I mean, we've looked at everything. Is the only thing I can do this? I guess because the sword is broken? So they put everything here that's broken? No, apparently not. And this again? No. Number
Hmm. I'm quite confuzzled. There's that. We investigate the door. The door is thoroughly broken thanks to the police who forced it open. Oh, that's what I haven't looked at yet. Alright, there's the broken sword. Sword, a broken sword. Swords don't usually break, ba ba ba. They're classified as different things of dialogue because I can't skip forward. It's kind of funny. I guess the barrels will do the exact same thing. That doorknob handle thing is looking pretty beat up. I suppose that's what happens when ten officers break their way in with brute force. Hey, that's odd. The lock up on this is completely fine. Look! a single dent! How is that possible after what that officer told us? Yeah, if the lock had been in use when the door was busted down, the lock itself should be completely wrecked. So the lock on the door leading to the outside is undamaged. How can that be? Okay, now I'm going to logic the sword and the door, and that was used as a barricade. Which I suspected. There we go. This is a bit strange. The police had to force their way into an unlocked room. And look at the pristine door and lock, and anyone can see that it was not the first, it was not in use at the same time. The policeman outside said that it took ten men to get it open. A door that was locked tight, despite it not being locked at all. It only be because of this. Oh, you mean? Yes, it was used to jam the door. Here, take a look at the door handle. You see how the handle is completely destroyed. So that's how the sword broke. Now that's in the organizer. Yay. Oh, is that it? Thought that we might uncover the true identity of the kidnappers, but instead we've only uncovered more questions that need to be answered. Ah! Oh my god, that actually scared the shit out of me! <laughs> Y'all better fucking clip that or I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> Just saying. Holy shit. <laughs> the thing is, dude, <laughs> with how I have my like my face, like my face is pretty damn close to my computer monitors. So like I'm just like looking over like at the game and, I just, and like just like straight, straight at my fucking face, just fucking eyes glimpsing into the void, just uh, fucking looks dead, dead fucking center at me. Like if he had been like looking to the left or something, like I would have been like, oh shit, proto badger. But no, like the fact that it just pops up, sh staring fucking into my soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that got me holy shit <laughs> bro I don't think I've been jump I don't think I've been jump scared like that since uh the fucking drop wig in rain world on stream <laughs> haunted game hmm <laughs> Oh, brother, I need water after that one. And a lot of water. Oh. Jesus Christ. Bro, my fucking stream tile says seeing how long I have to voice Meekins until my roommates scream at me. No, it's fucking like how many proto badger jump scares until my roommates scream. Hmm. Holy lord. Ah. Uh. Well, what is it? Well, well, Mr. Edgeworth, am I correct? What are you doing, sending popping out of the secret entrance like that? 
This is an underground passage used by staff members, sir. We badgers also make use of it in our duties. Look, why don't you get out of there first, and then we'll talk, okay? Ah, I beg your pardon, miss. Is the most intimidating thing in this fucking game. I'm just saying. What are you getting all excited about? You forget the photo rally, duh! See, look, now all I have to do is get a picture of the bad badger and I'm done. Ah, uh, yes, I vaguely recall the contest or something of that sort. I hate him. I actively fucking hate him. But what? It's gone! Where did it go? Hmm? What happened? What's wrong? A bad badger costume is missing, sir! Oh, is that all? Well, it's missing because the kidnappers stole it. I heard about how they were stolen. But they said that only three of the costumes had been taken. What? Is he saying that more than three of them are gone? Mr. Proto Badger, please tell me a little more about these costumes you use. I don't want to talk to the Proto Badger. I really don't want to talk to the Proto Badger. What did you mean by a bad badger costume is missing? Why, just what I said, sir. We are one bad badger short. Counting the spares, we have two of each costume on hand at all times. Okay, so because one of them is walking around in the park, the other should be in that room. Ah, uh, actually, both of them should be in that room. Huh? What do you mean? Normally, we don't use the Bad Badger costumes. In fact, we only use them during a certain event at a set time each day. What'd Proto do? I don't know. <laughs> it's the stage show where the Bad Badger wreaks havoc around the park. And the other badgers must work together to apprehend him, sir. I'm speechless that such a show exists. Well, sir, I was just trying to explain to you the only time we use that costume. Then doesn't that make it near impossible to get a picture of the bad badger? <laughs> You're welcome, let me watch this, hold up. I need to, I need to see this. <laughs> Five star line delivery. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's great. <laughs> I love the cleverness of the title there. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, feature, feature that clip, please. Please and thank you. <laughs> oh my god. That's good. That's good. That's good shit. Thank you, Circuit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing your part. Uh. Hello. Oh, CC, you whispered it to me. I didn't know that. I've never. Let me see. Let me see what you titled it. Haunted investigation. <laughs> not bad, not bad. <laughs> My fucking scream, bro. <laughs> uh, thank y'all both. It's appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know the whispers show up in the fucking corner of the screen. Very interesting. I'm learning more about Twitch every day. Ugh. Then doesn't that make it near impossible to get a picture of the Bad Badger? Personally, I can't believe that it's this close to showtime and there's no costume. Oh dear. What am I to do, sir? All this basically means is that the kidnappers stole four costumes in total. Then are you saying that there are four kidnappers? No, I don't think that's very likely. Oh? Recall that the costumes for for a minute. The stolen ones, you mean? What proves that a fourth kidnapper does not exist? So it's obvious they want me to point at that, but I just want to like reason out of my head why it's the case. So one stole proto badger. So let's see. Okay, so there's the proto badger that's out right now. There's a Blue Badger out right now, Meekins. There's, um... 
And there's a... Uh, there's a pink badger out right now. Yeah, so that would mean... If there were four kidnappers, they would have stolen four stole, uh, spare costumes. There we go. You had four people, and you wanted to steal a fourth costume when you naturally go for the full set and steal the pink badger costume instead. Yeah, that makes sense. And yet the kidnappers decided to steal another bad badger. I believe the culprits needed two bad badger costumes, but the question is why? Almost like one of them needed a justification for why they were holding guns. See what I can logic right now. I counted four bad badger costume pieces. Second bad badger costume. I believe it may be closer at hand than we think. Hmm? What do you mean? Costume in the trash. And you say that is wearing some very telltale pets. Hey, you're right! Let's get out of there and take a look! I suspect it. it's a bad badger costume. Well, minus the head. Won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. The hole in the hand is interesting. Because you would assume you would see, like, holes in it. Like, this is where they put the, uh, the costume that, um, got, sh got shot. But there's no holes in it. But look, its hand is hurt. Hmm? It looks more like something was ripped off it. Well, time to deduce. Actually, can I get to do something else first? I want to do the head first. Maybe it's a flesh wound from a fight with the blue badger? No, oh, no, that isn't what I'm trying to go after. I guess that's literally it. Okay. So I have to deduce this. Just wanted to look at the body. Costume separate. This was left in the isolation room. I mean, the only thing I can think of is this. Because of the wounds, so... Eureka! Nope. Clear to me. I'm gonna save because I'm running out of a lot of um. I'm running out of stuff. I'm running out of juice. I'm running out of prosecutor juice. I'm running out of that prosecutor Powerade. That's what I'm calling it now. Prosecutor Powerade. Running out of edge juice. <laughs> Is likely wearing one due to uh, footprint shape and the lack of blood. Wait a minute. Right-handed. Nope. I need to, uh... There we go. Uh... What do they want me to do? I know what I want to do. But what the game wants me to do is different.
vile criminal with a gun. They want, no, I already tried the head, and when I examined the head, I figured when I would look at the head, they would be like, oh yeah, this thing's missing its head. And then I point with the head, but. Like when I investigated, it was just like, man, I wonder why it has a hole in its hand. I sure wish we had something for the hole in its hand. You know, the hand, the hole in its hand. That hole in its hand. You should, you should look at the hole in its hand. We should investigate the hole in its hand. Nothing else around here that we haven't already looked at. We talked to the Proto Badger again. You're pretty famous, sir. I would think that most people would know who you are. Famous? Me? Absolutely, sir. You're always very active in the community, I hear. Wow, I didn't know you were such a celebrity, Mr. Edworth. I feel like I've met this person before. Maybe it's just my imagination. Please tell me it's Maggie. Please tell me it's Maggie. That would be funny. Okay. I can examine the chair. Once you use chairs, ought to be. Beginning to think you must keep the most chaotic room. I'm gonna try to do sing the head. want me to do? You know what I do notice, though? He's missing his, uh... Oh, no, he doesn't have a set. Why do I remember? No, I was thinking of the blue badger. I was thinking of his satchel. Huh. This is a certified ace attorney moment, it really is. <laughs> thinking and thinking and thinking. Okay, sent the email to my professor. Whatever you email them about goes good, CC. My findings indicate loss of blood. There's another page. Like a blood around the body suggests the victim was killed elsewhere and moved implies there should be evidence of blood at real murder site. You think they want you to point to, to use that book to point out the gun is missing from the drawing? Wait! The gun is part of the costume! When in the Sam Hell fuck? You didn't real- you didn't- No! Why would I think that the gun was connected to the costume? No, I'm- I'm not- I'm not going down like this! Why on earth would I think that a prop would be glued to the fucking costume? And when was that ever mentioned? Because I don't recall it being mentioned. True, mine is in the costume. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes sense once you know that fact. Like, okay, they need to make sure that it looked like the gun was part of the costume. That makes sense. 
I assumed it was glued. Why would a prop be glued? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about that. I would just give them a fucking fake gun with the hands that they can move. Maybe if the hands didn't move, you would have a case here, but no. I'm not, I'm not going down like this. That does not make sense. That is not intuitive. Is that way you don't lose the prop gun? I understand that. But also... Why? <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's dumb. They should have mentioned that the gun is connected to the costume. I've never heard of, like, props on costumes being glued. That's not common knowledge, at least to me. If, if that's, like, common knowledge to every single person else in the universe, it wasn't to me. I mean, that... Mm, certified Ace Attorney moment. Oh, uh, look carefully. Our costume is not holding something in the right hand that it should be. Hmm. Oh, the gun. Precisely, the Bad Badger was designed to always hold the gun in his right hand. Not happy. I'm not fucking happy right now. I ain't happy one bit. Not at all. Get Ace Attorney. I know I'm getting Ace Attorney. Nerd. <laughs> I'm upset at that. However... You there, did you remove the gun from the Bad Badger's right hand? No, I did not, sir. The gun is supposed to be securely attached to the costume. Cause that's apparently a normal fucking thing. That sun everywhere. Didn't you know? I thought the rip itself confirms my hypothesis that the gun was forcibly removed. It's a proto badger. The gun is, of course, not a functioning weapon, correct? Absolutely not, sir. It's just a model gun. However, it can fire blanks. We need to use them for the stage show. Seems that our kidnappers also had a need for the model gun, my dear costume friend. fired blanks it was functional apparently which also doesn't help which actually doesn't help old bag's story so what's next well we found a few answers but there's still a few things left that we have to ask a certain person about let's go okay i want to die i want to fucking die right now his edge was uh Gotta hurry, sir. Come on. Ugh. So we're coming up on next ad break. So I'm gonna let y'all go for a few minutes. This is a great chance for you to all to get some snacks, get some drink, get some water, use the bathroom. Do whatever y'all humans need to do. And once you're all done with that and I'm done lamenting over the bullshit that I just had to witness. We'll be back in just a minute. With all that being said, fuck my life. I'll survive for now.
Howdy, howdy, everybody. Hope y'all had a good break. Hope y'all got done what you need to get done. Uh, alrighty. Let's go ahead and move back on with things. They found a blue badger costume in front of the main gates there. What? Isn't that what one of the kidnappers were wearing? Bingo. That's why you gotta come with me to the main gate right now. If we hurry, we might still be able to get there before Wolf Boy does, sir. All right, let's make haste to the main gate. Oh shit, that was the beat. Uh, we could have. <laughs> we were two steps. We were two steps away. I thought it would have happened like after leaving, and I was like, oh, no, we still got a bunch of shit. We're technically right. Technically. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, uh, Circa was throwing shit at me. <laughs> you just turned off CC's Fumos. Circa, you're abusing your power. Stop it. There we go. I turned it back on. <laughs> you turned off his... Oh, wait, no. Oh, no. CC, you, you redeemed that. I'm sorry. I, th I thought Circa was being an asshole. My bad. By the way, uh, Circa's throwing shit at me. Circa's throwing shit at me during breaks. Mom... Keep throwing. Why? <laughs> what did I do? Objection. No. You're wrong. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, it is fun. By the way, none of y'all have ever fucking redeemed the make one third redeem spammable for a minute. None of you have ever done that. I'm just saying, if y'all find it so fun, why don't you give yourself unlimited, like, borderline unlimited throws for a minute? Ever think about that? Huh? Maybe for endgame? <laughs> what is it? When's endgame? Endgame is- Ah! <laughs> oh no. Here we go. go ahead. Here, here we go. Oh. <laughs> just to die on the other side. Of the fountain tin sensor. That is that, 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 that's a blue badger. Was it out here in the open all along? No, it was the, the skull in the tall grass back there, like a Pokemon. We moved the out here in order to do examine in it more more thoroughly. The lids can go to it. <laughs> I won't rest until all my back and everything the basic looking no can cry at me. <laughs> um alright it ended. Whew. Lord, I, I just start chuckling to myself over the stupidity of it. Alright. What do we have here? Oh, it's another pendant. That's two treasures in one day. How lucky is that? And hey, this baby's made of platinum silver, too. Another pendant on top of the one we found on Mr. Deacon. Possible that these two... Hold it right there. Hands off, Mr. Prosecutor. You sure know how to cross the line, don't you? Argon! A pendant, huh? It's a very decisive piece of evidence. How can you tell? Look here and read off what you see. Lauren D. I'm not gonna make the joke. Y'all know what I'm gonna say. Y'all can fill in the blank. It's a name engraved on this. I... I... Aha! We have you now, Miss Kidnapper! No, you don't understand! I... I... <laughs> Thank you, Cece. 
Like, that is not the name. That is not the name you should be giving her, Lance. That is. No, no, no. Lance. You're kidding. Miss Pops was one of the kidnappers? Yes. It. It was me. I held Lance hostage. So, Miss Pops is one of the kidnappers. Even knowing that, I can't call this safe case solved. We're over. Hey guys, case closed. Get the car ready, and I mean the special one for this young lady. <laughs> Again, Mr. Prosecutor? What is it this time? Are you proposing that Miss Pops is also the culprit in the murder case? What happened? I thought Officer Meekins was your suspect. Hmm. <laughs> we found it. Found what? That officer's gun, he literally dropped it in the middle of a thick patch of grass. Your country's police are a sham. Just look at how careless they are. Who are you calling a sham? The officer's gun didn't show signs of having been fired, so it can't be the murder weapon. So Officer Meekins has been cleared of all charges, I see. And that's when a brand new suspect comes walking onto the scene. Murder only happened because the kidnappers started fighting amongst themselves. As I recall, it was you who said that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Miss Pops, did you... did you really kill Mr. Deacon? I... yes, I killed him. I... I, I can't believe it. Ha 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 ha! Thanks for the confession. Objection. Agent Lang, it's too much early to declare this case closed. Look at you. So sure of yourself. Something about pots and kettles here. We've got the culprit's own confession, some very incriminating evidence. What more could you ask for? Miss Lauren Pops. Y yes I want to hear it from you. Tell me your side of all that's happened today, from the kidnapping to the murder. But why? I'm a kidnapper and a killer. Isn't that enough? It's fine if you're the one behind everything. But only if that is the truth. Exclamation point! Now then, will you tell us the truth? Was there some reason why you can't? Her elbow has an injury. Praying. I've had a change of heart. I think I'd enjoy seeing you soak away as the losing mutt. Alright, you heard me. Let's hear all about the evil deeds you committed today. And now we cook. If we're cooking, we gonna need some fire. Fire don't come free, though. Those gas bills are expensive. Wink. Wink. Oh, hold on. Wink. Wink. I can't wink, because I don't have winking on. The one who came up with the kidnapping plan was the butler. Mr. Deacon. Ah, oh, shit. The sound effects aren't working. Hold on. Fixing it. Here, let me get the startup sound for you. There we go. We knew that we could get rich by holding Lance hostage. Mr. Romano would pay anything to get his son back after all. Everything was going according to plan, but as soon as we got the money, Mr. Deacon turned on me and tried to kill me. There, are you satisfied she just confessed to her crimes a second time? Guys. Guys. At least you have the guts to admit you've done. I can at least respect that much. This Pops, is what you said really the truth? Y yes it is. That is the truth, it certainly isn't the whole truth. And not e certainly not nothing but the truth. There is something that seems a bit too improbable for confession. The one who came up with the kidnapping plan was the butler, Mr. Deacon. He knew he could get rich, Mr. Mono would pay anything to get his son back, everything was going according to plan, but as soon as we got the money, Deacon tried to kill me. What's wrong, Kay? I can't believe she was betrayed. I kind of feel sorry for her. I feel a little sorry for her, too. However, I also wish to would tell us the whole truth. 
because there is something a bit too improv about. Let's see here. <sighs> How well did you know the victim? I've spoken with him only a few times at Lance's house. A few times? That's it? Um, yes. I only meet a few times. I don't see how they could have trusted each other. But if you hardly ever talk, then how could he trust you not to steal his plan? That's completely irrelevant. He was planning for the betrayer from the very beginning. I know that. Because I do. Isn't that right, Sheena? Yes, however... Mr. Deacon made a very poor choice. In the end, he was killed by the one he intended to betray himself. Ha! Ah, I bet I didn't see that one coming. I know it said he didn't see that one coming. But that makes the line way more fitting. <laughs> oh. Mono would pay back anything. Would you mind telling us a little about the plan itself? Well, first we captured Lance. Ooh, how did you do that? Um, that, well, Mr. Deacon did that on his own, so I don't quite know. Ah, and here I thought you knew how to steal people away. Shut her to think what she would do with such knowledge. Sorry, I really don't know, but somehow Mr. Deacon was able to contain him. All we had to do after that was to wait for the ransom to be paid, but... Hold it. Uh, uh, this is definitely the last section. Why do you think he did what he did? I have no idea. Or maybe he had planned on doing so from the very beginning. Miss Pops. Mr. Deacon planned to kiss Miss Pops from the very beginning. Is that ever really likely to happen? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? I'm sorry, but I don't think what you just claimed is all that likely. Huh? I don't think Mr. Deacon would have ever been capable of killing me. But why? We were total strangers! It was not uncommon for people to kill each other over money. Miss Potts, you really are clueless, aren't you? What do you mean? You never knew what your role in the kidnapping was, nor do you know who you really are. But I do, and I can show you this piece of evidence. This proves that Mr. Deacon wouldn't have ever been able to kill Miss Pops. Take that! Why are you showing this to me? So what about that pendant? This pair of wings, along with this piece of evidence, shows who you really are. These two pendants resemble each other, wouldn't you agree? Hey, you're right, and they're the same color, and they're even of the same material. I believe that these two pendants are actually one. Eh? Shall we give it a try? Wow, it's totally Pegasus. But why? Why does my pendant match up with Mr. Deacon's? You're a smart lady. I'm sure you can imagine why that might be. What? No. That can't be. So the two make a set. <laughs> it's just another trinket. It's not as though this changes anything. <laughs> you like imagination, Engine Lang. Very well, I'll show you with this evidence. This is a piece of evidence that gives meaning to the Pegasus pendant. Take that! Bada bing, bada boom! What the fuck you gonna do? Oliver Deacon was just an al alias for this man. His real name was Colin Davore, the name that is etched on this horse pendant. What? An alias? I suppose he had to hide the fact he was a felon somehow in order to live. It makes sense given what is written on Mr. Davore's dossier. What I really wanted to point out was this. This specific section is what reveals the true meaning behind those pendants. Daughter. Mr. Devore had one daughter, and her name is Lauren Paul. It's a lie. The person was not my father. He couldn't come out and tell you he was your father because he was in hiding. However, I believe he was trying to secretly watch over you. 
You still believe that a man like that could kill the daughter he was separated from? Or even that such a man would allow his daughter to get involved in a kidnapping plot? <laughs> what is so funny, Agent Lang? You're good at making things up in your head and deciding it's the truth, aren't you? Again. Hot. Metal. What are you trying to say? Your thinking is much too innocent. After all, I've thought of another possibility. Is that so? Well, then let's hear it. I'll grant you that the two of them are father and daughter. But isn't it possible that they both knew that fact? It was no coincidence that their united pair became involved in the house of Amano, and the two of them made good use of their meetings to plan this kidnapping. Wouldn't you say my scenario is perfectly probable as well? So, this is his version of how things might have... You don't have any proof that either one didn't know of their true relationship, right? You mean they knowingly committed the kidnapping as father and daughter? That's right, as one really rotten family. That's really what happened. I'd better take a long, hard look at the evidence. Alrighty, let's see here. Showing that they didn't know they were father and daughter. One daddy daughter duo investigating another. <laughs> Beloved Viola. Shit. I dropped something. Hold on. I got it. Hmm. but it's impossible they both knew that fact. No coincidence that Irene and I pair became involved in the house of Amano, and the two of them made good use of the means to plan this little kidnapping. You say my scenario is perfectly probable as well. Hold it. One is a butler and one is a friend of the sun, you mean. <laughs> They probably thought that was their best shot. Is that what you honestly believe? Of course. Hold it. Mean how they plotted to commit this crime as blood relative? Can you think of a better partner? They're certainly a clever pair. The butler and the girlfriend. No one would ever suspect that they were, in fact, family. Yes, from the very beginning, they painstakingly practiced these roles well. Possible they both knew that fact. We need to prove that Lauren didn't know. Because Deacon obviously did. in the house and found a Morgana, I would be able to guess they were family. <laughs> Unfortunately, don't know about that source material. Stole a gun where his wife and sole daughter are. According to our surveillance, he have yet to show up. Banger visual novel? Ah, I gotcha.
Foreign D is engraved into this pendant. Why just the D? Maybe it's a result of poor planning? I guess. Well, at least if I had to shorten my name, I could make it K Faraday. I had to do the name, I'd rather it be abbreviated to M Edgeworth. Well, I think you should abbreviate it as M E, get it? Who would have thought this little pendant could stir up such a strange conversation? Rockwell twists and all of them land. Is there an anime for it? Or is it just a visual novel? So was this her pendant? Yeah, it is. Miss Pops' pendant. Colin Devore is engraved on the back. Is it because of the abbreviation that they can't be confident? Let's give it a shot. are flawed. Hold it. Think they knew. Yeah, I don't think only the victim. I think the girl realized as well. They both know who the other person was, but they had to pretend that they didn't. Because he was on the lamb. Got it. The victim couldn't exactly go around flaunting who he was. Furthermore, Um, Lang isn't wrong. This scenario is certainly a probable one. You'd better hurry up and do something, or Lauren's gonna wind up looking really bad. I know, but first things first. Is Agent Lang's line of logic factually correct? Do the two of them really knowingly commit the crime as father and daughter? Or about to unknown after his wait he was in prison for 10 years and she's how old Look at profiles here. Chat isn't working? What do you mean? It's working on my end. It's, uh, it's working on stream, too. Unless it's on browser. No, it's working. For me. I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, the VN is best on Switch since it's got all the extra content. Every once in a while, Twitch chat just kind of fucks up on browsers. I gotcha. Bit pricey, though. Fucking hell! Is 
Doesn't say how long he was there. Dex mail. Spider balance he has yet to show up. I'm just gonna present it. I do feel like the dock is probably what you want to present, you just have to find the right line. The coincidence that the United United pair became involved in House of Ano. Two of them probably made good use of their means to plan this little kidnapping. This is a really long fail. Ang Z says, Confidence is like a soul, and words about confidence are but empty shell. Shouldn't waste your breath on words you have no confidence in. Are you going to let him lecture you about your self confidence like that? I'm gonna save since I'm bleeding a lot. Now that was a failure. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, dude. There's gotta be something. I need to really look at the evidence. I need to look at every individual piece. So, prosecutor's badge, definitely not. That has nothing to do with it. Blue Badger Bible definitely has nothing to do with it. Same with the photo rally, same with the head, same with the costumes. His murder notes. Guys, there should be evidence of blood at the murder site. This has nothing to do with it. His pendant, if like a horse, is engraved on the back. Dear Lance and Mono, may I come see you again, your beloved Viliola. Broken prop sword, missing model gun. Miss Pops is pending. Well, she didn't know it was a Pegasus, that is true. We need to prove it is impossible for them to know that fact. Things we need to disprove are either it's impossible for them to have known that fact, which is probably what we should focus on, we would also need to focus on it was impossible for them to plan this together. Though with her pendant in the costume, it doesn't help. And she knew about the kidnapping, so she's definitely involved. It was planning, just not his father and daughter, exactly. This was to Lance. 
just lands, and I can't make out anything on there. Presented Lauren's pendant. Let me present Deacons. Fuck, dude. on this yet. Precisely, and my father would ever willingly kill his own daughter. I've seen a lot of things in my travels, and I can tell you that being relayed by blood is the ninth proof of nothing. No coincidence. Hold it. I believe you're being a bit too overconfident for someone with no evidence. Am I because I don't see you presenting any evidence to the contrary? Pressed on everything. Good thing happened today. Oh, what happened? Got through the shoulder. There's no way it's the costume. I got stereo headphones and a microphone so I can use voice chat and PC. Oh, yo, nice. Hope it's a good set. Objection. All right, I'm rebooting. This is really tricky. I'm getting Ace Attorney so hard right now. Samson Q2U, I do not know what that one is. How much did it cost? Objection. I am just presenting everything at this point. Not gonna say. I know it's good for ASMR stuff. Ah, okay. I gotcha. The fucking letter. Chat, should I look it up? I'm very tempted to look it up. I'm running out of ideas. So Mark can compete with Mill Mill. At this point, she says it's more character roleplay than ASMR. Yeah, no. Do I look this up? I really don't like looking this shit up. Whereabouts unknown after his escape from Pen E. Dent Prison. Dominant hand. Right. Stole a gun from a guard during his escape. We thought he might head for where his wife and soul dollar are, but despite our surveillance, he has yet to show up. Look it up. Uh, Alright, so Circuit, here's what I'm going to say. Look it up. But unless, but like, if it seems reasonable, don't tell me. But if it's something so overwhelmingly stupid, then tell me. Has yet to show up. Well, he was their butler, though. Oh, what the fuck does not smell good? It's stupid. What is it?
It's the So I was right. Fourth statement with the costume. I feel like I chose the wrong one. <laughs> Alright, so let me count one, two, three, four. Is it all right? So is it stolen costumes? Stolen costume. Objection. This kidnapping wasn't planned by just two people. One second. One, one second. <laughs> Done. kind of proof do you have the state this had nothing to do that had nothing to do nothing he said had anything to do with oh it could only have been them i'm really trying to i'm really trying to understand what the thought process was here. So it's like, oh, they had plenty of time with their meat. Like, the statement is what's bothering me the most, I think, here. The statement you have to present on, they had plenty of time to schedule this with their meetings. Look outside the box for an interruption? What does that mean? Or did you mean to say interpretation? There were three kidnappers. Look outside the box. But... That wasn't what we were looking for. That's not what we were told to look for. We were told, hey, we need to prove that we were told that we were asked if his logic lined up. So we had to come at his logic, not point over there and say, oh, wait, but what about this? That wasn't what... getting ace attorney or is this just stupid four costumes were stolen from the wild wild west area's back room and one of them in the kidnappers hideout but as for the other three we can assume they were being worn by three different people we also found a set of three cups and three folding chairs okay it all points to a three-man group and i believe this third person is the real mastermind behind the kidnapping
if the statement had been something like... Something like this could have only been done by two people or something. If it would have been something along those lines. The fact that there is three people has nothing to do with the statement that we presented that on. There's no, like, connection there. We're literally just pointing at something completely unrelated and being like, oh. Look, but what about this thing? Doesn't have to do anything with what Lang said. We're just pointing at something completely unrelated. Who has said only two because he had the, I'm just saying, like, anything else but that. Something to imply that, oh, he thinks this is... Like, there's just no connection here. Billy really had to keep in mind three and connect it to the line with the mention of planning. That's dumb. I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not going to entertain that because this is fucking stupid. <laughs> Here's what I would have done. Here's what I would have done here. I would have done something similar. I can kind of... I can't. Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing, CC. Up until S Circuit looked it up for us. You weren't thinking about that at all either. Because a mono... I mean, not a mono. Uh, because Lang was not talking about this. His statement, his testimony, literally was just not talking about the number of the people, the number, like, a mastermind or anything like that. He was not talking about any of that. Also, here it wasn't here for the cups thing. I don't know, man. I, I cannot, I cannot agree with this decision. This was really dumb. This was incredibly dumb. I was AFK for that, but I didn't know. Sorry. <laughs> like, uh For the record, I'm uh I'm thinking that Lance staged his own kidnapping, by the way. That's what I'm thinking is going on. Uh this is so stupid. Here's what I would have done, personally, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tab out for this, just so I have no music distracting me. Um, here's what I would have done. I would have made it one of those things where, like, you press on every statement looking for something, with no contradictions or anything, and then Edward would just be like, Oh, I can't find anything to disprove what he is saying. And just be like, there has to be something I can point at to raise an objection. Something that I can direct and say that we don't have the whole story yet. And then, then you point to the three people. That would have been way better. Alternatively, just don't fucking do this shit at all. Just don't fucking have this cross-examination. Don't have this fucking, like, most obtuse connection in the universe saying they had all the time in the world to plan this. Oh, there's three people, though. And the two of them made good... God fucking damn it. It's still really obtuse. Well, it would have made a bit more sense to present it on the other statement. And maybe have Edgeworth be like, hmm, is this the only probability? Or something? Just something. Just something. I guess the two is what made them be like, oh, but there was three. Oh, my God. That is such a, like, tiny fucking detail. <laughs> Uh, I even noticed that they actually said two. That shows how like easy it was to gloss over too. 
It's like the two of them. Like, I mean, of course I'm not thinking about that because I'm just think like, I know in my head there are three people and I know those two people are involved. Of course the two people are talking to each other. Or are not asserting that it was just two. Yeah, this this is not done well. Not done well. I'm like, yeah, no. Now that I see that they did say two, it makes more sense. But like, it is so like minimal. I don't want things to be like smacked in my face. I do like to think about these things. Like I was thinking about the abdomen through the shoulder thing earlier. That was good. I like that. I managed to see that early and I managed to finally like get to it. The game wasn't like pointing me in that direction, but it did have some things to look at and think about. Like I would have had to look at the evidence and like that would be a small detail that wouldn't be in my head. Hell, even before oh my god. <laughs> uh and using the costumes too. I'm gonna be real, the coffee cup should have been its own thing of evidence. And I probably would have picked up on it faster. Cause I was just looking at it like, oh yeah, stolen costumes. Costumes were stolen. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, it's fine. It's fine. We we do we did it. We're done. Get back to the game. It was this mastermind. Okay, but I can at least present to my final assumption in all of this. As much as I would like to say it was Lang. Take that. I think Lance staged his own kidnapping. Lance Amano? Yes, the subduction was in fact schemed up by Lance himself. Recall what he said when he appeared before us. You see the faces of your kidnappers? No, I didn't see their faces, but two. One was a woman. However, there were three kidnappers, which is in direct contradiction to what he said. But I, I know I only saw two people. This guy was being held hostage, it possibly couldn't see all three of them. Ah yes, about when you were being held, I have my doubts about what happened now. Lance, would you mind telling us what happened while you were being held captive? I really don't remember much anymore, honest. But if I don't tell you at least something, you won't believe me at all, will you? I was kidnapped yesterday morning. They had me shut in that room blindfolded the entire time. The kidnapper suddenly disappeared around the time I heard rain falling outside. My hands were cuffed, but it was a stroke of luck that they left me alone. I made my escape and ran away from that room as fast as I could. Blindfolded, with your hands cuffed. Are you okay? Sorry, I really didn't want to recall that horrible ordeal, but... Now you believe me, right? No, not quite yet. Ah, how can you not? Why do you look at me with such icy daggers in her eyes? This is his voice now. Because he's a prosecutor, because they're all like that. Well, have you no know, Agent Lang? A prosecutor's eyes are for discerning the truth. Unless your name is Francisco von Karma. Or Godo. Uh, fucking... Fuck, what's his name? Or Gavin. A prosecutor, though. <laughs> Or Black Quill. Or the one guy from the sixth game whose name I can't remember, but he was also an asshole. Mm. <laughs> Sticking point in Lance's testament. See what he offers up when I push a little. Basically any prosecutor that isn't Edgeworth, exactly. No, because Gavin from uh, Apollo Justice is cool. He's cool. I like Gavin. Gavin's my fave. Actually, no. Blackwell's my fave. I like Blackwell, too. Blackwell is also pretty, like, straight-laced getting to the truth. For the most part. He's just a bit rougher. Shut in that room blindfolded the entire time. Dodo did nothing wrong. Eh. I don't know, his blind hatred for Phoenix was a little irrational. He was not a, he was not a truth seeker. 
I wouldn't say that. He was more a Phoenix hater. Franny did nothing wrong. Franny also was a Phoenix hater. She also just cared about beating Phoenix. She didn't care about the truth up until the end of the game. I won't say much though. Circuit is playing through the series. I don't want to spoil a lot. So be careful, Cece. Don't spoil C don't spoil Circuit. Yes, but I was blindfolded the whole time. So I didn't know that until I made my escape. Is it sharpening his wit? No. <laughs> then you were in the same room as your kidnapper. They spoke in a hushed tones, but I could catch bits of the conversation. There was definitely two people, and one of them was definitely a woman. I was so scared, I could tell they were nearby, so I didn't dare make a move. You know, Ace Attorney power scaling. Hands were cuffed. And there's cuffs on your wrist. I suppose you are still cuffed in that case. I am well aware how I am chained to reality. I couldn't find the key, so I'm afraid I'm stuck like this. Even though I escaped from that jail cell, I will forever be a prisoner. I escaped and ran away from that room as fast as I could. How did you manage to escape? I wanted to just get out of there, but the door leading me outside was locked. Which is why I had to use the underground passageway to my, my escape. It was not locked. Let's let it go and examine. Locked tight, so I had to use the underground passageway. No fucking wasn't, you stupid bitch. I want to get really spicy. Manfred from Karma is mostly a decent person. My brother in Christ. That is a hot take. That is a hot fuck. That is a hot fucking take. That's a surface of the sun take. All right, I like that. That was cool. We're talking about that room behind the saloon, right? Look, I heard that it took quite a few men to get that thing open, right, Sheena? Yes, that's correct. Then take a look at this. What is that, a sword? It's not an especially reliable one if it's broken like that. Allow me to start from the eye and my conclusion is that the door was never locked. It was simply held shut by the sword, which was used to jam the handle. Lance, even though your hands were cuffed together, you could still use it. If that's the case, why didn't you not just simply remove the sword and escape? W why didn't I? I was disoriented. Yes, that's it. I didn't notice it. As if I should accept such a bold-faced lie. You locked yourself in that room because you had to make yourself look like the victim. But you did not, in fact, possess the key to that door. That is why you used a prop sword to improvise and create a prison of your very own. Focus on his bad moments when the man was a father of three. He taught them to be assholes! He taught them to prosecute like he did! To sentence innocent people! Fucking hell, Edgeworth was accused of falsifying evidence! There was a rumor about him! Where do you think he learned that? Manfred von Garla! My guy! I'm gonna snooze a few times, see if we can get through this case, because the ads are bombarding me. You've been making out this guy after he wanted the kidnappers for some time now. I wonder if you've forgotten something very important along the way. What would that be? A motive. What else? Do you honestly think that an uptight, pure boy like him would hatch up a completely pointless scheme such as kidnapping himself? This proves that Lance did indeed have a motive to commit his crime. Take that. To put it simply, Lance has a very urgent need for money. This is hardly your typical love letter. It is in fact a collections bit. He is an upstanding boy who is accumulating quite a debt. Isn't that right, Lance? Eh? I fucking love that. Puffing. It's like pathetic and badass at the same time. I don't know how to feel about it, but it's cool. 
Looks like it's hard being the son of a rich man, too. Must be rough when you have to resort to stealing from your own old man, huh? <laughs> All right, I give up. I abducted myself. Lance! It's over. Stop calling her that. In this life, we really are bound to our fates, after all. All I wanted was to go with you to a new town somewhere where no one would know us. I wanted us to be well off with that one million, but now that dream is over. Oh, Lance! Hmm. Then are you giving yourself up? Yes, as I had planned to run away from this world with my... I'm not saying that. Oliver even helped us with the plan, but then he had to go and stab us in the back. Turned on you. Maybe he didn't want to split the ransom money. That's my guess. It happened almost right after you made the drop-off. When we were alone, he attacked me all of a sudden. After a brief struggle, I was unable to contain him and keep him under control. We left him inside that room as not saying that, and I made it our escape. We wore different costumes and split up. Not saying that, left first in the blue badger costume. That would mean the person Officer Meekin saw was Miss Pops. But right then, the old man just had to wake up. I was careless and he tackled me pretty hard from behind. And Oliver put on a bad badger costume, took the suitcase with a million dollars and ran. I contacted not saying that right away and warned her he had a gun. They had no idea that they were related, so I thought that it could only end badly. I still don't believe it. That person was not my father, because if he was, I... I just killed my own father! Not saying that, then... then it really was you. Ah, oh, man, we still got one more. Okay. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go to ad break. And once we come back, we're gonna wrap up this case, because I don't think it's got much more after this, because clearly we have to prove that Lance was also the guy who killed, um, Deacon. So, this is gonna be a great opportunity for y'all to get some water, get some snacks, use the bathroom, if you haven't done so, like, a million times already at this point. Do whatever y'all need to do, and as soon as we're back, we'll go ahead, and we'll top off the rest of this case. So with all that being said, bye for now.
You didn't get the gif. Wait, did it do anything? Wait, hold up. Alright, I'm back. I don't even think it did anything because you did it on the waiting screen. That's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, here, look, just for you. Just for you, Circuit. Is it? There it is. All right, just for you, Circuit. Just gonna be late. There we go. <laughs> okay. How 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 everybody? Well, well, uh, well back to it. A a a turn. Boy, this that man was not my. Wait, what the fuck? I'm confused. Did it fix itself? Hold up. The fuck? I'm very confused now. You see what you do, Circuit? You see when you try to do things out of order? You see what happens when you try to do things out of order? You fuck it up, even for yourself. <laughs> Here, let me do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> the blame is entirely on you. No, it's not! <laughs> and you're set up. I use mix it up! <laughs> I take no blame. Well, okay then, you write me a fucking different coding pro- You write me a fucking different program to do this shit then. Mr. Oh, it's your setup. You just fucking mix it up. Asshole. Alright, all my mics are set. Let me do it again. Damn. Be late. All right, all right, that that should, should work for for a minute, a minute. All right, I that man was not my father. I mean, maybe because at the stadium there was a bad, bad two suitcase pulling in the two kids with with the one million yen in, in it. But that bad, bad judge point is gone at me. Hey, meaning to shoot me dead. That's why I used the gun I got from land. There was a gunshot. The other person crumbled to the ground. And I ran, scared for my life. <laughs> I think the big picture is finally coming in the focus, don't you? Not saying that. Forgive me, I didn't think it would turn into something so frightening. <laughs> if only, if only I could have protected you. So, Miss Pops, she shot her own dad without knowing who he really was? What she says it's true. Are you saying she's lying? Well, why would she lie about something like that? What purpose would it serve? Surprise how pi often people lie without even realizing it themselves, okay? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What I mean is, listen very carefully to her confession once more and you'll see. 
All right, let's see here. Because at the stadium, there was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with one million in it. So there were two bad badger outfits. Where's the money, Pops? I mean, yeah, exactly. Oh, there's some other things. That, that was the ransom money, wasn't it? Yes, that's how I was able to identify Mr. Deacon almost immediately. It was all thanks to what Lance told me. What did he tell you? Well, he called me on my cell phone and told me that Mr. Deacon had betrayed us and run off with the ransom money. And about how he had a gun. That badger pointed his gun at me, aiming to shoot me dead. That's why I used the gun I got from Lance. Shot Mr. Deacon. His pops. Yes, I, I shot him. Ha ha ha! And that, as they say, is that. Agent Lang, Miss Pops isn't far from done. She hasn't even finished her testimony yet. You're going to continue questioning her? What a waste of time. Miss Pops, if you please. All right. Gunshot, the other person crumpled to the ground, and I ran scared for my life. Miss Pops, what will become of her, Mr. Edgeworth? You need to be telling the truth regarding what happened at the stadium. However, I don't believe it to be absolutely correct. Listen very carefully to a confession once more and you'll see. But that badger pointed his gun at me aiming to shoot me dead. Wait a minute. No, it's more... Hold it. You're able to clearly see the gun. Yes, I got a very good look at it while it was pointed at me. Oh, and father, why would you try to shoot me? Do you really think a father would shoot his own daughter, Mr. Edgeworth? I don't know. I don't want to believe it myself. It's true, my father's left arm was raised with a gun in it, pointed straight at me. I'm about to die, I thought. This pops. Please calm down and take a deep breath. And then would you allow me to please hear that last statement one more time? Y yes, of course. Left arm, you say? Hmm. glued to his hand it was not it's because the, the gun is in the bad badger's um it's in the bad badger's right hand i have a dossier on your father according to this your father was right-handed ah then that person pointing a gun at you from atop the stage was not mr deacon hold on there mr prosecutor i think you need to take a refresher course the bad badger has a model gun attached to his right hand which is why the only gun he could have held in his hand was the left. Isn't it possible that it went down like that? Agent Lang, were you paying attention to what Miss Potts was saying? And again, I suppose I can't expect someone who has never set foot in court to catch him. Enough with the smugness! Out with it already! Miss Potts told us earlier. There was a bad badger pulling the suitcase with one million in it. According to you, the bad badger had the gun in his left hand. Which would mean that he was pulling the suitcase with his right hand. Is that correct, Miss Potts? Yes, exactly. I'm sure it was the Bad Badger. It had those huge sunglasses on its face. And it, but if that's the case, even I can see where there's a huge contradiction. Yes, Miss Pops claims to have seen the Bad Badger. But the Bad Badger had both of his hands full. These two pieces of information contradict each other, so one must be wrong. I think it's... So let's see here. God, I wish I remembered what she was wearing. Uh. They are both correct. Impossible! That just leaves us with an irresolvable contradiction. This pops entire stimming rates on the fact that she saw sunglasses and a beard. 
What if that Bad Badger wasn't wearing pants on his way? This proves that there was a way for the Bad Badger to freely use both his hands. Costumes have two parts to them, a head and a body. Oh, I get it now! The head of Miss Popstar was probably really the head of the Bad Badger. However, it is not possible that the body was that of an entirely different badger. A different badger? Or, to put it more bluntly, I believe it was the lower half of this badger. The body of the Bad Badger, Miss Popstar, really belonged to this badger. So both of those were missing. Would it be Proto? Yeah, no, she left as the Blue Badger. And Meekins was the... Other oh, blue badger. What? What the heck is this? It's the proto badger. Yes, it's a simple matter of process of elimination. This pops is wearing the blue badger's costume, so we can eliminate that one. The pink badger is one of the wrong color, which would have been incredibly obvious. Well, it's left as the proto badger costume. This pops. Who was the one who wore the proto badger costume? That that would be Lance. Are you saying what I think you are? That Lance Amano donned the Bad Badger's head and pretended to be Mr. Deacon? On top of which, he plotted to shoot Miss Pops while wearing that hideous thing. The stage that was set up in that stadium was nothing more than that. The setup. And its purpose was to lead Miss Pops into believing she had committed murder. Standing there in front of Miss Pops and pretending to be the victim. It was all done so she would pull the trigger. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Why exactly would I have to do all that, huh? There's but one reason, Lance Amano. You are the real culprit behind the murder of Mr. Oliver Deacon. What? No! That slander! Take it back! You take it back right now! Just out of curiosity, Lance, which is your dominant hand? I I'm left-handed. But what does that have to do with anything? And, according to Miss Swaps, her attacker had a gun in his left hand. Ha! Ah, who is that what who is what handed doesn't prove a thing? And besides, now you're just being absurd. It's not like the proto badger is bulletproof. One misfire and he would have found himself dead, right? Of course. Logically, if he had been shot, he probably wouldn't be here with us. I believe he had thought of that as well, and prepared accordingly. And this should be all the evidence you need. This is how Lance made sure he wouldn't be hit by a bullet. It's all lining up. Found one half of a bad badger costume in the hideout, a broken one. It was not the same one the victim was wearing, plus it was missing something. And that something is a model gun the bad badger carries, which can fire blanks. What? This pops, where's the gun you use now? I, I threw it away into the sea. That makes it a bit tough to verify what it was. Although I believe that we can safely assume that it was the model gun in question. I've heard enough. All you've been spouting so far is pure conjecture. But as long as I have my own gun is lost to us, I can't prove I'm right. However, I can say that the probability that I am right is very high. Okay, let's pretend that you're right and the murder at the stadium was a fabrication. In that case, where do you think the murder really took place, Mr. Prosecutor? I don't know yet. Ah, I knew you were full of it. However, I do believe that the murder took place during an earlier time frame. Please, wait a second, it simply was not possible, because, because, I saw Mr. Deacon after he was restrained by Lance. She saw the victim in the state of being restrained. I came back to the hideout long after the other two. By that time, Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. He had tied Mr. Deacon securely to the beam in the room next door. After that, the two of us put on our costumes and made our escape. So, Mr. Deacon must have separ escaped after the two of you left, right? We thought that it'd attract too much attention if we left together, so I left first. We planned to meet up again at the stage in the stadium. But then, as I was walking through the park, I got a call from Lance on my cell phone. 
Oliver managed to escape. It looked like he was waiting until I was all alone. He also stole the gun from me at that time. And then the murder happened. Mr. Deacon must have overheard their plan to meet up at the stage. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, Miss Potch saw the victim with her own eyes. Which means that the victim was still alive at the time, wouldn't you agree? Why does that sound wrong to me? Must be something amiss about this account. Let's see what happens when I examine it in detail. I'll be real, I kind of want... I kind of winged a lot of that. Because I was not keeping track of the badger costumes. It was difficult to, without knowing which ones were which, on hand. Okay, I came back to the hideout long after the other two. At that time, Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. He tied Mr. Deacon securely to the beam in the room next door. After that, the two of us put on our costumes and made our escape. I'm in a hideout, and the murder must happen after that, meaning it probably went down at the sink. Can't really see why Miss Potts would lie at a time like this, you know? Is, yes, and I intend to show that that bad assumption is. He meant to hide out long after the other two. Uh, and Lance had already subdued and restrained Mr. Deacon. Hold it! How did Lance look at that time? He, well, he looked shocked. Also a little down when I saw that sadness in his eyes. I... Well, Mr. Deacon, what was the situation like? Purely to the beam in the next- Wait a minute! I skipped over that. There was Mr. Deacon that you saw? Yes, I am certain of what I saw. You go into the other room to check. Lance said it was best if I didn't get too close to him. Lance, he's such a kind soul. Why are you telling me? You did not confirm that it was Mr. Deacon for yourself. I checked through the slit in the door that separates the two rooms. He had a bad badger's head on, so I'm absolutely sure. That just had to be Mr. Deacon. She saw a bad badger head. Objection! That wasn't Deacon. Miss Pops, the person you saw was not Mr. Deacon. Huh? The person you actually saw was this person. It was me. Huh? The person I saw was you, Mr. Edgeworth? I always thought it was a bit odd. Why would the kidnappers adopt me even after I had handed over the ransom? Not as though I saw the face of the kidnappers. If I were them, I would have just taken the million dollars and ran. In the end, there was a point to it all. It was to make me look like Mr. Deacon. And if that was the reason for which I was abducted, then I believe we can assume that the victim was already dead at that time. Well, Lance, am I right? Is that... You showed Miss Pops a person, namely me, with a bad badger's head on, and then made your costume escape together. Or so you pretended. Huh? What do you mean he pretended? Exactly that. I believe Lance watched you escape, and then doubled back to the hideout. Probably to come and remove the bad badger head from my unconscious self. <laughs> Create his fake prison with prop sword, he escaped via the passageway. Hold your tongue, boy. Don't get caught up in that tidal weight of words coming out of Mr. Prosecutor's mouth. I don't think. We've heard a lot come out of you, but I've yet to see a shred of it. The victim's betrayal and his subsequent detainment? All that could have happened while you were out cold. That's right, you were out for quite a while, Mr. Prosecutor. Even if that were the case, Miss Pops would still have seen me tied to that beam. I was scared of Mr. Deacon, so I didn't go into the next room. So I really have no idea if you were in there or not, Mr. Edgeworth. You see, it would seem that you can't prove a thing. <clears throat> Who said that? Please wait. Mr. Amano. <laughs> oh, Miles, my boy! It looks like you're really giving it your all. Lance, it's not good to cause trouble for others. Dad, you just like it with this boys, don't you? <laughs> Steve, you are the one in charge of the investigation, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm sorry that my sister's on that has been in, 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 in trouble. 
This brawl may oh, make up for anything. Fire evidence for you. Oh, you do now. Is that what I'd like to hear? It is. It's a bad patch costume the victim was wearing and the gun. <laughs> When waiting around for the police, so I went and found these myself. It appears that they were the spoiled of in the sea. Damn, that was a fast minute. I feel like I need to lengthen that a bit. A minute is really quick. Yeah. Ark, is there no one in these country who actually obeys the law? There, there. Now. Agent Wang, please calm down. Hmm? What the heck is that scrap of paper? This appears to be a letter from the chief of police. Please allow Mr. Amano complete freedom to do as he sees fit, says. What? The, the chief of police? What the? Just who does he think he is? The person who wields the highest authority in this area. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. There, there. Now... There's no need to be so upset. Heh, <laughs> I'm not a cop from this land, so I'm not bound by the laws of your country. Now, now, now. This wasn't meant to strong arm you into anything. It's just our quest. I'm only asking that you please respect the laws of the land. <laughs> can't really say no to that. However, returning to the topic at hand, it doesn't matter who found the evidence, its value remains unchanged. All right, now let's take a look at this new evidence. I've already got the results back. I had a special forensic research lab that I'm on good terms with conduct the tests. They verified that the blondest cartoon belonged to Oliver. As for the gun, the only fingerprints they found were yours, Lauren. What? You disappoint me, Miles. I can't believe that you... That you would cause my son such stress and heartache. Thank goodness I was able to find the final pieces of evidence. With this, you have no reason left to push my boy boy around! That's it? This is the case making pieces of evidence? Ah, I'll be the judge of that. I'm going to rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Could this gun be the actual murder weapon? Bullet hole, abdomen, as was said. It's kind of burnt around the edges. Wait, those burn marks were left by gunpowder. This is the most important fact. Why is that? Because it's proof that the victim was shot at point-blank range. Another fucking pendant. Hey, they sparkle! I bet they're really valuable. So, we're able to just pieces of a mirror. Why are they in here? Are these not the most definitive pieces of evidence you have ever seen? Thank you, Dad. This should be enough to convince even Mr. Edgeworth over there. Make no mistake! There are fingerprints on that murderous gun. And they prove that it was, not saying that, who killed Oliver. But Oliver was also after not saying that's life. So, Mr. Edgeworth, even you must see that not saying that was only acting in self-defense. Fingerprints on the weapon. Oh no, this isn't helpful at all. Look, Mitchell Edgeworth, all I want to do is save not saying that. But in the end, all I can do is watch on as she takes punishment for her crimes. That may be all you can do. However, I still have a case to solve and a job to do. Job on unraveling your insidious lie. You wound me. Why won't you believe me even in the face of all this evidence? Let's wrap this up. Make no mistake, there are fingerprints on that murderous gun. And they prove that it was Lolly who killed Oliver. Oliver was also after Lolly's life. Those fingerprints, are you sure they belong to Miss Pops? There's no mistake about it! Through my connections, I had the best forensics techniques money could buy performed. I find that to be a bit peculiar. What? 
Are you trying to pick an argument with me? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Frankly, I don't believe that Miss Pop's print should be on that gun to begin with. And the reason why Miss Pop's print shouldn't be on the gun is... I mean, wouldn't it be that? Used to kill Deacon was originally stolen from a guard by a victim during their escape. Nothing in the chamber. Oh, eh? Found Miss Pop's fingerprints on this gun. Can you let me hold it for a sec? You shouldn't if you don't know how to handle it. Besides, Miss Pop's prints are on it. Look, I'm wearing gloves. I'll be okay. I just want to take a look, that's all. Not like I'm gonna run off with it. The only thing is I don't return our treasures. Stealing either one would land you in jail, you know. not be on that gun is... At the time of the shooting, gunpowder proves for the shot from point blank. I'm just thinking about, shouldn't it be the fate gun? The costume should be the reason, right? That's what I'm thinking. Ah, oh, man. The, the thing about this is keeping up with the costumes. It's like Bad Badger, Proto Badger, Blue Badger. The other Badger doesn't really matter. It's just keeping track of all these minor differences. All these different badgers. And I have like, if it was kept up within like the evidence, I, it would be a different story. It's like, and like now I have to think about like the bodies and the, di it's, I have to think about the bodies and the heads too. It's like, okay, one has pants, the other has just a satchel, and then one has a gun, and then one has a beard and sunglasses, and one has the most terrifying eyes I've ever seen in my life, and just, ugh, it's a lot to keep track of. That's the victim's costume. Yeah, no, it should be the costumes. Simply not possible for Miss Pops to have left any prints on the murder weapon. Because while she was at the stadium, Miss Pops was wearing a costume. Huh? But there's no mistake! We found fingerprints! Oh, Miss Pops, do you remember touching the gun at all at any time? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I did hold it for a bit back in the hideout. I handed it off to Mr. Deacon when he and Lance left for the haunted house. Leave the ransom money, I suppose. There you have it. That is when Miss Pops' prints found their way onto the gun. Uh, you understand now, Mr. Omano. Fingerprints do nothing to prove that Miss Potts is the murderer. But you still don't have anything to prove she isn't the killer, right? You seem very adamant about insisting your girlfriend is a cold-blooded killer. Oh, Lance. What? No way. I'm incredibly worried about her. But that doesn't change the fact that you don't have any evidence, right? Huh. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong. I have the evidence. What? How? story that Miss Pops killed the victim at the stage in the stadium. It's all there, simply not true because this was not the real crime scene, but the setup. This proves that the real murder is not committed at the stadium at all. Take that. What do you mean? The mirror in the room! Or in the haunted house! Either one works! Oh, 
Oh, or wait, we mean a point blank gunshot. Let's take another good look at the costume the victim is wearing. And I believe you will see why I insist he was not shot at the stadium. A part of the costume that proves it. Take that. This bone around the bullet hole was made when the victim was shot at point blank range. Ah, so then you mean the murder Miss Olbeck saw at the same room as yes, she saw two people, but they were separated by a distance. The victim was indeed shot from below the stage. There shouldn't be a gunpowder burn. <laughs> Look at you, Mr. Smarty Pants Prosecutor. Since you seem to know all the answers, why not tell us where the real crime scene is, then? And set me up to look like Mr. Deacon back at the hideout. That's the case, and the murder must have happened prior to that. The location where Lance and the victim were just before I was in prison was... I got it! I know where the real scene of the murder is. The real location in which Mr. Deacon was killed is here. It's not unreasonable to assume the murder took place in the haunted house. A haunted house? Yes, and I have proof that it is highly likely that the victim was killed there. <sighs> now the mirror fragments. These were inside the costume the victim was wearing. They're fragments of a mirror. A mirror? What does that have to do with it? You don't exactly expect to find pieces of a mirror inside a costume. Yeah, that's actually pretty dangerous. However, there is one place I can think of where there is a plethora of mirror fragments. That is the haunted house. And so, Mono, I propose you kill Mr. Deacon with a revolver in the haunted house. After that, you stole the Blue Badger Mobile to move his body to the Wild Wild West area. The timing of when the Blue Badger Mobile was stolen confirms this fact. Why else, my boy, say no more! I'm sorry, Mr. Mono, but I cannot do that. Be quiet. Yes, please! Do something! Stop that boy from speaking any more nonsense! Ernest Omano, correct? I meant you. Now be quiet, Gramps. How, how dare you! I need no words. The only thing I require is evidence. Decisive evidence. And to call these mere bits decisive is a bit too presumptuous, Mr. Prosecutor. What? Sheena, wasn't there a mirror in the kidnapper's hideout? Yes, there was a mirror there. A mirror that's for the haunted house. You see, this is impossible. The fragments gotten from there. Agent Lang, there were no fragments on the floor, so the probability is very low. Probability? <laughs> Lang Z says, on truth's path, the word probability does not exist. The only thing that does is definitive proof. Which you have been adamantly against this entire fucking time. Question, Mr. Prosecutor, do you have the definitive proof you need? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, do you? I have solid evidence of proof the murder took place at the home. The answer is... No. See, since you don't have any, shut up! I don't have the evidence yet, but... I'm certain the murder occurred around the time I turned the ransom over. A time the only people at the haunted house besides myself, Lance and Mr. Deacon. I can prove that the murder took place at the haunted house. I can prove Lance's guilty connection to the murder. What now, Mr. Edgeworth? In Lang, I have a special request. Yeah? I'd like to prove to you that the scene of the crime is indeed the haunted house. Why in the world are you asking the werewolf for permission? Because I don't really have a choice if I want to find the truth. Alright, permission granted, but you're not to touch a single thing, got it? Be a problem, all that's more important to me is the truth be brought to light. No matter by who or how it's done, as long as it is. <sighs> Gina! I'm here. Put in the paperwork for the authorization immediately. Understood. You'll get the Great Wall of Group's approval. Who, who was that? Now, now. Let's hold on for a second. There is no need to obtain approval. Sir Mono, Agent Lang, would you please take a look at this? What is this? Sheena! It's the deed to the haunted house. The deed? Read it out loud. Eight Water Land Inc. hereby bequeaths the property known as the Haunted House, Mr. Mono, for the lump sum of one million paid in full in cash. What? Oh, 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 as you can see, I'm now the legal owner of the Haunted House! Are you kidding? When did you... I ran into the owner of the park earlier and we made the deal almost immediately. 
Hold on, I'm doing uh I'm doing circuit a favor real quick. Don't mind me. Don't mind me at all. Okay, discombobulate lasts for two minutes now. It's iconic. Hmm. How quickly things move when you can prepare a million dollars in the blink of an eye. <laughs> That's one million you paid? Don't tell me it was. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this disgusting suitcase belongs to you, doesn't it? Nate? I don't have any more use for it, so you may have have it back now. You used the ransom on a nini. My Lance is a good boy. Even apologize for the kidnapping you paid all the year. So I do believe that I will forgive him and after all the year of teen, the ransom money. That's a way to ignore. So whatever you, you believe is a thing with me from now on. Discuss what is there to discuss? Why pay me? On the house, of course. While we were busy listening to our answer to story, Mr. Mons, you know, answer that preempting us. A machine to the dirt on the house is in an island. Ancient lying. I want you to attack Google. And Miles, you should go out and rely on home now, my boy, before I really, really lose my temper. Oh, Mr. Romano no, has the, the deck excited. I did it a favor here. What should I do? If I leave like this, it's the truth where well, they'll be lost forever. Really? Still to be continued. Okay. Well, we're approaching four hours. I'm going to hit save. I really thought we were on the tail end of this, but no. I will just go ahead. I will close out the game. I will go over to chatting. And I will turn on the music. Real quick, like. So we're not in awkward silence, even if it's crispy audio quality silence. Uh, 1,000 more years turn about kidnappers, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. I can't escape Shatola. I can't escape turns about kidnappers. I can't escape shit lately. I can't escape that bear either. I've been working on that thing for weeks because I've had so much shit going on in my life. But you know, it's okay. Go ahead. Go to Twitch so I know exactly who I can raid exactly right now. Um. Hmm. No, I say I will go ahead. And we're going to raid one of Viz's friends again. And indirectly raise Vi raid Viz because she's here uh, right now. They are playing uh, Monster Prom over on Brian FRG's channel again. So we're gonna go ahead, hit them up. Uh, Brian FRG. Bada bing, bada boom. We're gonna hit that button. And uh, yeah, jumping from one visual novel to the another. So, tomorrow, art. We'll be doing the whole art thing. We'll be ideally finishing that bear. And, um,. As far as next week is concerned, uh, I might see about getting somebody for a collab if I finish that bear. If I don't finish the bear, I think we'll, I think we'll uh, leave things as they've been for a bit. But outside of that, I don't think there's much else to talk about. We will finish this case next week, though. That is for certain. So yeah, hope y'all had a really good time. Hope y'all have enjoyed the discombobulate redeem. I had a really good time on stream. Today's been a good day. I'm happy. I hope y'all are happy, too. With all that being said, y'all have a good day, night, afternoon, wherever y'all are. Whatever the fuck y'all are doing, 
and y'all have a good one.